really sad when you put it that I'm leaving Keene. I like to think that I'm going to um, the Lakes region of New Hampshire. It's beautiful out there. Yes, it's very pretty, and I'm looking forward to the summertime by the lake. So um, It's almost summer today. It was in the 70s today. <laughs> I heard that we were just looking around for places that were... Um, Keene is not the least expensive place to live in New Hampshire. By no means. And I f- felt like, you know, maybe I could get a much nicer place without paying that much more in rent. But I looked at other places and uh, someone, I heard through someone that Alton Bay has some of the lowest property taxes hmm. in New Hampshire, which surprises me because in New Hampshire, they raise your property taxes if you have a, any kind of view. Like, uh, so if, I've heard, yeah. If even if it's like just a little bit, you can kind of see the, a lake from your from one of your windows. Your property taxes like skyrocket. So mm-hmm. I don't know why that would be, but anyway, it is very nice, and I'm excited. So when you were looking at a new place to move, because a lot of people will move to New Hampshire. They'll rent a place in wherever, wherever their destination is, their initial destination, and then they'll kind of explore the state over time and get to know different areas. But obviously, a lot of people move to places because of a job, for instance. Right. You've got more of a mobile kind of job, and so I'm not sure about your boyfriend at the time, but he has had a mobile s- style yeah, job. Yeah, so... Um, so, you did, so you weren't necessarily picking based on job location. You were really more looking at cost of living? Cost of living, and it did does have to do with work because I'm I travel over New Hampshire. It is a more central location. Oh, okay. It's basically like sna- uh, smack dab in the middle of New Hampshire. It's where I am now. What's so it's in the Lakes region? Does that mean it is near? It's like at Laconia? the tip of Lake Winnipesaukee, and yes, okay. it's near Laconia. Very cool. So you've you've made the move. That means that uh, you but how, you are going to continue doing your show ALP. Yes. So that's exciting. So uh, I'm, I'm sure our listeners would appreciate knowing that. I don't know what it means for you being on Free Talk Live. What's your intention there? Well, my intention is to continue to do Free Talk Live because it's worth the two-hour drive. We'll see how long you <laughs> you think that's the case. I won't be offended if you feel like it's too much uh, too much effort because that's a long drive for a, well, last, a once a week. Unpaid last week gig. I wasn't on, and I was thinking about the listeners and even the people in the chat room, and I was. Like shed a little tear thinking about, oh, <laughs> I like to connect with them every week because, you know, it's like separate family. All right. Well, I appreciate you being here. And our toll free number is 855-450-FREE. Of course, we all moved up here as part of the Free State Project. It is uh, your best chance at achieving liberty in your lifetime. And there are a lot of destinations around New Hampshire, many of which are sun, sort of unsung. I mean, you hear a lot about Keene and Manchester and stuff going on in Concord. But there's so many little towns. I don't know how many towns there are in New Hampshire, but there's a there's a glut of uh, towns in New Hampshire from which to choose. I feel like to start out in New Hampshire that if you want to be, uh, you know, in the know about what's going on and meet lots of other people who have moved, I think that Keene and Manchester are good places to start because then you get to meet everybody and get to be part of the social movement. And I feel like I've been able to make connections since I've been here. Mm-hmm. If I had moved straight to the Lakes region and didn't know a lot of people, then it would be much harder to, um, you know, get linked in. It's not that there aren't people out there, though. I mean, there are yeah. activists in the Lakes region, and they do have regular meetups, from what I understand. Yes, but Keene is a small town. I see people I know who are movers all the time when I'm in Keene. It's not uncommon. Now, we're actually going to start the show out tonight with a story kind of about the movement here. And for longtime listeners of the show, uh, you guys know we're Free State Project participants. You know that we all moved here at various different times. Allie, been, what, three years now? For yes. You? Uh, Mark and myself since 2006. There are over 1,500 or 1,500 people who are here in New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. Over 15,000 have uh, have not made the move, or about 15,000 have not yet made the move, because we're those 15,000, most of them are waiting until we get to 20,000 participants at freestateproject.org to pledge to make the move here. And uh, I started a website called freekeen.com back in 2006, and it was started with the intention of reporting on some of what I consider to be very exciting, very interesting activism that was happening here that was what attracted me to Keene. Sometimes people ask me, well, why did you choose Keene, New Hampshire, when there's so many options in New Hampshire? Why Keene? Well, it's because of the activists who moved here before I did and the exciting stuff they were doing in the realm of civil disobedience and street theater that I just thought I had to be a part of that. I had to help sort of uh, promote what these people are doing because to me it was so much more interesting 
than someone running a political campaign. I mean, libertarians run political campaigns all across the country. Why is that? Why would that be interesting to anyone anywhere? Right. And I actually had a local who's lived in Keene for a long time ask me, why is why did the activists choose Keene? I don't think they're aware that you know, activism is happening all Elsewhere. over New Hampshire, yeah. but you know, it feels but it's not happening like this activism, not happening. like this. And they were curious to know like why here. And I explained that while they did put New Hampshire up to, a, you know, the state that would be the home of the free state project was up to a vote and, you know, New Hampshire won the majority. But then as far as choosing where you're going to live in New Hampshire, that's just totally up to the individual. And if you, look at videos of activism in New Hampshire, a lot of them are coming out of Keene. So if, you know, Keene's brand of activism appeals to you, then it's going to attract more of the, more of those people. And some would say that is a terrible thing. Uh, there are those out there who are critical of Free Keene and the activism that sort of for better or for worse, associated with Freekeen, even though some of it, Freekeen.com, you know, Freekeen's just a website. We report on the things that happen, uh, even though some of the activism in question wasn't created by Freekeen at people who were Freekeen bloggers at the time. So there's a lot of kind of misunderstandings out there about it. But Carlos Morales, who is a relatively new mover to New Hampshire. That's we, right. We actually had him on the show from the Liberty Forum. Was he on ALP as He well? was also on ALP at that Liberty Forum show. Super nice guy. Really seems like a really bright dude who actually used to work for CPS, which is kind of what we talked to him about. Yeah, and he talked about that on our show, too. Fascinating. That that was a fascinating interview, and I'm sure we'll have him on again at some point to tell some more stories, because I'm sure he's got many of them to uh, to relay. But uh, something he did apparently a few week, couple few weeks ago was right at, not short, not long after he moved was he came to Keene for a weekend and or at least some some amount of time and apparently he went to several bars uh, within downtown Keene on a Friday night and asked people what they thought about free Keene. But for, let's step down for just one second, uh, gentlemen. This is sheer genius um, to walk into a town where you've never been before and uh, just sort of. You know, claim to be a reporter, and he is a reporter. He's got mm -hmm. a blog. He's got I mean, a web, uh, he's, radio show. He's a legit. Yeah, right. He's got a radio show. He's he's a reporter, but I yep. mean, I just don't know how to. You know, he might be not a reporter in the sense that uh, everybody like he's not from the New York Times, right? Mm -hmm. um, they came here recently too. Yes, they did. But uh, so to be able to do this, this is a great opening line for starting conversations. And oftentimes, I'm a reporter. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm a reporter, and I'm doing a story on such and such. Can you give me your opinion? Yeah, some people suddenly, will want to talk about. It. Suddenly, yeah. people, um, you know, will want to talk to you, and this is uh, this is a great opening line. So go ahead. So I want to share Carlos's piece here, and then I'm interested, Allie, to get your thoughts. I know what Mark's going to say, but I'm interested to get your thoughts specifically because you worked for at least a year, maybe close to two, in one of the more publicly visible locations yes. in Keene, New Hampshire. It was two years. Yeah, at a uh, at a corner, the Corner News, which is one of the more kind of iconic businesses in Keene. It's been, it's there, been there for, for a while. More than 100 years or something like that. And whether they sell cigarettes there, so lots of people go in there. Exactly. It's a corner store, convenience store, newspapers, pipes, bongs, things like that. Uh, and she sells water silver. Pipes. Water, water pipes. Water pipes. Right. Right. Uh, and they've, she, they've never sold a bong. <laughs> only water pipes. And she sells silver there, and she accepts That's Bitcoin right. as I, well. It's very kicking. So it's a great store. We'll, uh, we'll, it'll be interesting to get your viewpoint on what Carlos has to say here about his experience talking to people, presumably average people in the bar uh, in Keene, New Hampshire, on a Friday night. Uh, people age range 20-somethings through 30-somethings. We'll come back here with those thoughts, uh, those observations here in moments. And you can take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. The question is, are keen activists having a positive effect? Are, you know, are we doing the right thing? More on the way. 855-450-FREE. You take control on Free Talk Live. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because 
I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. We know you're out there. We can feel you now. We know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. We don't know the future. We aren't here to tell you how this is going to end. We're here to tell you how it's going to begin. We're going back to editing the next edition of Freedom's Phoenix Digital Magazine now, where we are telling the people what you don't want them to know. We're showing them a world without you, a world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice we leave to you. Subscribe at freedomsphoenixeasy.com. That's freedoms with an S, phoenixeasy.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of Namecoin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited to bring up whatever you'd like. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. Feel free to get in touch that way. You will need to send, if you haven't done so yet on Skype, send a contact request to username lrn.fm, and we will add you to our list, which will make it easy for you to call on Skype from uh, that point on into the future. Cashintocoins.com is open for business 24 hours a day. You can go there and learn how to turn your cash into Bitcoins. Bitcoins, this amazing decentralized currency that is seemingly taking at least some of the world by storm. There's more and more businesses are signing on board to take Bitcoins uh, over time. And you've got big name businesses like Overstock.com and Tiger Direct. WordPress. Uh, these are big names that are taking ca- uh, that are taking bitcoins. Maybe now's a good time. They're sub five hundred dollars for a bitcoin, and you don't have to buy one bitcoin. You can buy a fraction of a bitcoin. In fact, cashintocoins.com will allow you to buy less than forty dollars worth if you want to. In fact, if you buy less than forty dollars worth of bitcoins at cashintocoins.com, there's no transaction fee, so there's zero cost. 
to getting into Bitcoin if you, if you do less than 40 bucks at cashintocoins.com. So if you've been thinking about just trying it out, you want to see what it's like, it's so easy and no fee. Cashintocoins.com, it's fast, it's legal, it's inexpensive, and customer service is their top priority. It doesn't get easier than Cash Into Coins. Dot com. Looking forward to their big announcement that's coming soon, hopefully. Not sure what the time frame soon. is on that, but uh, we'll let you know as soon as we know about it. Cashintocoins.com. Uh, Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. So the story here from truthovercomfort.net. This is Carlos Morales. He's a new mover to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, having moved up from Asheville, formerly with the Blue Ridge Liberty Project, uh, one of Two former uh, BRLP uh, spokesmen, actually, who've made the move up here recently, which is very exciting. Is Carlos living in Keene? No, he's uh, living in Manchester, but okay. I've heard he's considering making a move outside of Manchester to somewhere else. And so he was kind of feeling things out in Keene. And uh, here are some of the responses he got when he went around to bars on a Friday night in Keene, New Hampshire, asking about free Keene, pr- pr- you know, purporting to be a reporter. Yeah. Uh, and asking about free key. See, this is interesting that because I assume that people's answers would maybe be different depending on where you went, the atmosphere. Mm. Like if you went to uh, all the breakfast places Sunday morning, would you get a different response than if you go to a bar? That's a good question. Uh, and what night of the week is it? It's Friday night. Okay. Free keeners? Aren't those those a-holes that harass meter maids? Free keeners? Aren't those those a-holes that F with cops? Free keeners? Aren't those those a-holes that F with the courts? These were some of the comments made when local Keene, New Hampshire residents were asked what they knew and how they felt about the Free Keen project. I will make this clear now. This is not intended to be a hit piece against the Free Keen movement, but rather a small survey of individuals' views in Keene, New Hampshire. I recently moved to Manchester to ally myself with the Free State Project. After giving a speech at the Liberty Forum, I was blown away that there were so many individuals within the Liberty Movement who had moved to New Hampshire to change their lives for the better. And just as an aside, it's an amazing thing to come to the Liberty Forum or to come to the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It really makes this whole thing that we talk about so often on Free Talk Live, the Free State Project, it really makes it real. When you can find out who these people are, who are these people that have, who are, who are those 1,500 people that are here in New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project? Is that some imaginary number? Are those people real? What are they really doing? Well, come to one of those events and find out for yourself. That's what happened with Carlos. He was blown away by his experience. And you will be, too, if you love freedom and you like the idea of being around other people who share that uh, share those beliefs. And Porkfest is coming up soon. It is. I think we're 10 weeks away from Porkfest, as Ooh. a matter of fact. So start packing. Uh, Three weeks later, he says, my car was packed with everything I needed to start a new life. After a few days in Manchester, I decided to drive to Keene to see what individuals such as Ian Freeman have been raving about for years on Free Talk Live and other Free State Project-backed podcasts and radio shows. According to Ian Freeman of Free Talk Live, the Free State Project is about liberty in our lifetime, and this would be accomplished in part by civil disobedience, most of which is happening in Keene, New Hampshire. And by the way... I don't remember the last instance of civil disobedience that has happened here. I mean, there hasn't been a real, you know, noteworthy I'm going out kind of besides Derek J. And that would have been 2011, 2012 range. It's been a couple of years since yeah, anything. C- civil disobedience often gets used as this sort of blanket catch all term for, um, you know, I don't even know, outside the system activism. You know, he does use it kind of incorrectly here in a moment. I'll, sh- I'll share that. So t- t- this would be accomplished by civil disobedience, which is mostly happening in Keene. The civil civil disobedience, disobedience is best defined as I'm going to go break the law with the intention of getting arrested to bring uh, attention to, you know, I don't the think injustice. that's true. I don't think you have to have an intention to get arrested. It's a possibility that you'll get arrested, but it's not necessarily the best thing to get arrested. Sometimes it can be, sometimes not. Sometimes it's very good to do civil but, disobedience and not get arrested so you can show that the government won't enforce their laws uh, equally. But it's definitely not that you're like secretively breaking the law. Well, right. Civil disobedience is openly Open. uh, violating the law. So he defines this civil disobedience, including breaking unjust victimless crime laws, as well as public demonstrations from women walking topless. Again, not civil disobedience. Uh, w- women walking topless in New Hampshire may be social kind of disobedience, but it's not civil, like it's not breaking any kind of law. So therefore, it's not really civil disobedience. It may help bring up a conversation about people's beliefs about men and women and equality and, you know, toplessness as an issue. Uh, But as we found out when the police arrested Cassidy Nicosia several years ago for walking down the street topless while open carrying, 
not not only is it not illegal to open carry in New Hampshire, which everyone knew, but it's also not illegal to be a woman and be topless. They actually had to release her, and they apologized for making that arrest, which is very, very rare. But anyway, the topless thing does get remembered. A lot of people are aware that people have been topless and keen, and there, there is controversy about that. But again, technically not civil disobedience. But it does raise an inter- interesting question in my mind at the diff, like, you know, what controls our behavior. And there's a lot of social stuff that controls us. It's more than just some, some people say they don't like to be controlled. And there's a good argument to make that there shouldn't be laws controlling behaviors that are peaceful. But there's a lot of peaceful behaviors that are just uh, sort, of, sort of socially uh, stigmatized. Sure. Sure. I mean, I there's not you're going <laughs> to the fact is it doesn't matter whether we get a rid, rid of the um, the state, the monopoly organ, an organization that can't claims monopoly privilege over the use of violence in a given landmass. You're not going to get rid of prudes, <clears throat> that's for sure. You're not going to get rid of socially unacceptable and socially acceptable behavior. You know, I mean, people running around naked Folks aren't necessarily going to like that. Just to be clear, no one has run around naked, Mark. That's another common misconception about what's happened here I in didn't Keene. claim they did. Okay, I'm just letting people know. It's, I can suppose you could say you, I associated you, it. You made it sound like people might have been running around naked. Well, if you would have Not let only... me say my next um, sentence okay. was like picking your nose and eating the boogers mm-hmm. or you know whatever it might be that one does, there's going to be all kinds of behavior that society is just going to say that is unacceptable. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, sitting out in a public park Well, I don't know who naked. society is. There are certain individuals within that society, whatever, however you define that. There are certain individuals who will be upset by certain actions, but they are by an, by no means all upset by the same actions. Different individuals have different preferences when it comes I to I think what society is them. some large percentage of people. Uh, society is a voluntary association to which people join for a specific purpose. N- or you can also make it a general when statement When you go out about, in public, you're going to be dealing with society at large. Mm, that's true. And they are made up of individuals who have different opinions. So it's not fair to say society believes one thing or another. More on the way. You can take control here. We'll share the rest of what Carlos's story is about his the people's opinions, some people's opinions about free keen. You might be shocked. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. If you own a business, you need customers, right? Well, your potential customers are listening to this radio program right now, and I can help you reach them. Hi, I'm Matt Brower, a national marketing executive at the radio network responsible for this program. I can help you customize a national radio campaign that fits your budget, large or small, while targeting your specific audience. Call me to learn how radio advertising can make your business more profitable. 877-996-4327, extension 1. 128. That's 877 996 4327, extension 128. If you are like most people, chances are you're malnourished. Most people do not get the 90 essential nutrients the body needs to survive. This lack of nutrition can lead to all sorts of health issues. If you don't feel as good as you'd like, or if you're looking to get a jump start on a new, healthier you, Longevity has your answer. With the Healthy Start Pack, you get all the nutrients your body needs. With all 90 essential nutrients and 115 fruits and vegetables, you get a supplement system that is antioxidant rich and beyond compare. The Healthy Start Pack includes products backed by 40 years of science and millions of dollars in research, like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, EFA Plus 90, and OsteoFX Plus. To order your Healthy Start Pack today, call 607-739-5595. Again, that number is 607-739-5595. Once you start taking the Healthy Start Pack, you will see and feel why our motto is 90 for life. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and we'll take your calls about whatever you might like to discuss here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Also, Skype on into the show. Username here is LRN.FM. And with you in studio tonight, Ian. Allie. And Mark. Allie's here because of her show, ALP Show. You can check that out at ALPShow.com every Saturday night, but also in archive form, downloadable via MP3. That's probably the way most people listen to the show. It's just easier to, to get a show like that. So go and check that out. What was uh, the ALP acronym last week? Oh, the acronym? Oh, I don't know the acronym, but we talked about (laughs) feminism. uh, And it was a really good show. It was Ellen's topic. And so we talked about the different stages of feminism. And I thought it was really interesting because I still don't know how to feel about it. (laughs) About feminism in general? As a concept, yeah. It Mm -hmm. doesn't seem like it's one consistent um, no, it certainly doesn't. Principle it doesn't. or philosophy. It doesn't. It, it's very confusing to identify as a feminist. I don't know what that means anymore. <laughs> What's that? Uh, somebody identify? If, if, I, if I were to go around telling people I'm a feminist, I have no idea what they would think. The definition I've seen of feminism uh, recently um, was so broad that any sort of right-thinking, reasonable person would fall into that category. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like and, belie- works towards equal rights for men and women, or something yeah, like that. Just, just sort of believes um, that that's you know that that's a, a, the right thing that that you know women and men should be tre- treated equally under the law, or something like that. And yeah, like everybody thinks that, but that doesn't make me a feminist. And if it did, why are we using a terminology that's uh, gender-based? Right. You know. Well, and I think Ali's point's really important that. You don't know what the other person's thinking. So if you use a word like I'm a feminist or I'm a capitalist or whatever, then you just uh, you've just taken on whatever amount of baggage that person has in their mind about that word. That, you know, that becomes you. Maybe. Well, it depends on the perception and where you are. Like I would change what I'd call myself depending on the uh, the context of what it is, mm-hmm. right? So if we're having a conversation about um, equal rights or say you're talking to people about whether or not uh, women's suffrage was a good idea then I might be like well I'm a feminist you know in that sense sure, so first, that's very clear where I stand I'm a first wave feminist I believe women should have the right to vote exactly that whole uh, you know coupling up with the temperance movement and bringing on uh, more than a decade of organized crime in this country and mm. cementing organized crime um, and, prohibition. and uh, destroying law enforcement well I wish we hadn't got involved in all that but yeah you know Feminism's got this sordid history through, through you know, fr- from the very beginnings, honestly. So back to activism in the Keene, New Hampshire area. It's been controversial for a long time. People in within the liberty movement, many of them have opinions, uh, some pro, many con about some of the things that have gone on out here in, in Keene. Carlos Morales from truthovercomfort.net 
did some independent reporting and investigating uh, in the bars of Keene, New Hampshire on a Friday night, asking people what they thought about Free Keene or what they knew about Free Keene, which is a website, by the way, for those who don't know. It's my website that I founded. There are something like a dozen plus bloggers there, more than a dozen bloggers that you know blog about a variety of different things from media to news to opinion about liberty, kind of with a liberty uh, focus. And you get um, you get a lot of views on that website. I mean, about as is, much as freetalklive.com. Yeah, it yeah. is a it is it's a very well viewed. It, it's it's uh, what are the one of the top three political, if you want to use that terminology, um, blogs in New Hampshire. We're probably number two in New Hampshire, uh, behind behind the Granite Rock. Okay. I wonder how many people, um, like what ratio is it of people who go to Free Keen because they're they're supporters of they Free love Keen it or, hate it. or people who are haters and they <laughs> well, there's also cur- looky loos curious people who just like yes. to kind of uh, read up on what's going on. So he asked people in bars about their opinions and he's uh, he's talking about kind of the, the civil disobedience. He gives a few examples of things that he might consider to be civil disobedience. I uh, don't agree with uh, the idea that women walking, walking topless is civil disobedience. He mentions that. And he also says recently the bulk of this civil disobedience has involved Robin Hooding, which again, not civil disobedience because Robin Hooders aren't breaking any laws. In fact, Robin Hood, James Cleveland has been famous for saying that it's civil obedience because they're paying fines, you know, they're, they're not paying fines. They're paying the parking fees right. uh, for people. So they're actually helping people be more obedient to the state. And by preventing tickets from being written, people, the people who are parking, are technically being more obedient. So not really accurate to call it civil disobedience, but yep. it is activism that's very noticeable. It's very, you know, out there. Garrettian has this huge afro. I mean, it's really clear when when the Robin Hooders are on the streets uh, saving people from from parking tickets. Yeah, when you have an afro, anything you do is activism. It's really conspicuous. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, going on here, he then explains a little bit about Robin Hooding, where, in, according to our website, if your meter's expired, Robin Hood and the Merry Men and Women will place a coin into the meter to extend your time, presuming we reach the meter before the King's enforcers. The purpose is to rescue motorists like you from being ticketed by Keene's parking enforcers. These different activities, says Carlos, have sparked intrigue and contempt on online forums and news publications. Recently, a new group known as Stop Free Keen, uh, with three well, exclamations and all capital letters. Yeah, I'd like to point out that um, this has got national, international attention, and almost all of it's been positive. That's true. I mean, there hasn't been, you know, when t- this is just sort of one of those, hey, look at this weird thing that's going on in this little town in New Hampshire. It's a water cooler topic for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not that big of, you know, to people who aren't here in town, it's not derisive in any way. It's like, well, that's awesome. Those people are running around putting coins in and look at that guy's hair. Yeah. You know? I mean, how important do you guys think the local perception of activism is? Oh, we're going to get into that. Because um, I, I don't mean, think it's very, uh, very important at this stage in the game. The same person I was talking about before who was like, why Keen? Why all this activism in Keen? Uh, I basically said to them, you know, they were not happy about it. And I said, it's not a, any surprise to me. Like before I moved to for the Free State Project to Keen, I had a feeling that there were going to be locals who didn't appreciate the activism, not just because you made that clear on the show, but it just... You would think that that would be the case because there's a lot of people who like things to stay the way they are, and those people are going to be out there anywhere you go. And so if you come to their town and shake things up, then they're going to call you a carpetbagger until you get out of town. (laughs) Of course. I I totally agree with you, Allie. And it's the people who are very, very sensitive to what others are saying who are saying, you free keeners are doing it wrong. You need to do it our way. Be respectable, dress in suits, and go to the state house and speak on issues and run political campaigns. Well, I do those things too. Uh, but, but let me get back into the, the opinions here and we'll dissect as time goes on. Uh, so back to Carlos's story. He talks about the Stop Free Keen group on Facebook, which uh, describes itself as a group of people sick and tired of the negativity from the radical anti government libertarian anarchists, unquote. They've gotten a bit of attention in the news for their open hostility towards the group, and some members openly discuss forcing the free keeners out of the city. Needless to say, yeah, I mean, you know, all kinds of violent things have been said, including lynchings and a variety yeah. of things. It's uh, it's frightening stuff. Those folks say. Needless to say, if Free Keen has done one thing, it's getting the attention of locals, and that much is certainly true. Um, and I think that you're either being talked about or you're not being talked about. 
Uh, at this point in the game, it's hard to correct misinformation that gets out there because there just aren't enough Liberty people in the area to connect to enough people's social networks to overcome those misunderstandings and misgivings that people have for listening to to rumor, essentially. I think that it's, instead of trying to backtrack and say, let's correct the misunderstandings, it's sort of like if you're at a job interview, they're going to decide if they like you within the first like 30 seconds or something. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter, it's just a personality contest. So if, you know, you don't have to go back and backtrack and be like, well, this time, you know, when I lost my job, this happened and you don't need to go into all that. You just have to be likable and people will stick up for you. It's not that they actually have a problem or could, or could go and say exactly why they don't like uh, you know, Robin Hooding, they're just going off of a feeling and it's a lot of it's social because yeah. that my friend at the water, water cooler doesn't appreciate it. So now I don't either. Yeah. I think that that's a, you know, that's exactly what's what goes on here is, is that most people don't know. They don't know anything about anything. No. They repeat the stuff. They, they hear. just hear things from people <clears throat> and they, the people who hate activists are more likely to talk trash than people who like what we're doing. And even though people like say the local news writes a hit piece on Free Keen, uh, and a lot of times they focus on you, Ian, but mm-hmm. you have lots of unlikely friends in the community just because you're nice to them and they like you as a person. We'll come back with more. I think that's what I was trying to get at was that the more Liberty people come here, whether it's to Keene or anywhere in New Hampshire, the more we'll integrate into that community and the more people who have negative opinions will have their opinions changed because they'll actually connect with somebody. Yes. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. You can share your thoughts. Whatever's on your mind goes. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No Hair has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot free talk live dot com the three most important things you can do for free talk live are one share one episode a week on facebook or in some other social networking site two 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hard-working men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us online at freetalklive.com. Enjoy all the features that we have on our website. We give them away. We've got the mobile site for those of you with a smartphone. AmazonMobile.freetalklive.com. We'll take you there. You get quick access to our live streams, the podcast, and the webcam. All there, all free from M. Dot freetalklive.com. We're talking about some of the controversy uh, within Keene, New Hampshire, which happens to be where we do this radio show. There's a movement of activists that are coming to New Hampshire called the Free State Project. Some have landed in Keene and made a splash over the years with civil disobedience and other activities that have attracted some negative attention. And we're uh, kind of outlining some of the negative misunderstandings that people have. Uh, Carlos Morales, who's a newer mover to New Hampshire, came to Keene and interviewed some people hanging out in bars about what they thought. We'll get back to his report here in moments. Dennis is on the line in New Hampshire. Uh, Dennis, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, greetings, folks. And you know, this is one of the things I just love to talk about. Um, I I think people who listen to the radio and hear Free Talk Live, as much as I love Free Talk Live, you all know I've been big fans of y'all for way long time. You've amped the program at some point. I don't know if you still do. So, I mean, that shows a uh, strong dedication. Oh, and I, I certainly will again in the future when, uh, when things are a little bit less weird for me. But, um, you know, I think listening on the radio, you get a different idea. And, listen, and living places other than New Hampshire, where you don't have true retail politics, you just get a different idea about what's reality than, than when you're here. But I think ultimately, both Allie and Ian are hitting it right on the head when you're talking about those person-to-person real connections with real people. If the first time you are aware of a person in your town is when they are yelling through a microphone or they're topless and open carrying, Mm -hmm. that you're going to have, it's going to be very difficult for you to relate to this person, identify with this person, and think of this person as someone you're going to go to when you've got like, geez, how how should the town be run? It's just not the first thing that's going to enter your mind. And it so blows my mind just how, what, what a waste it is, given that you're in New Hampshire, where there are so many town operations that are done purely by volunteers. There are all these different committees and little things to just basically run the town that in other places would be done by paid bureaucrats. They're done just by normal people, unpaid, just to do it sure. in New Hampshire. And all you have to do is show up and just you know be on the recycling committee or... Just yeah, actually, there were a couple for- of uh, a couple of the Robin Hooders went out this weekend. There was like a Green Up Keen event where people were picking up garbage and probably planting flowers and things like that. Beautiful. And so they went out there and they got the Green Up Keen T-shirts and they made the comment that not a single one of the uh, people from the the Stop Free Keen group were uh, were out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, do they know what was yeah, happening? I don't know. That's how you win. I mean, if you if yeah. you show up in town and the first thing that you do is just lend a helping hand to whatever you feel is worth your time helping with, not right. starting out by pushing your agenda of like, hey, did you know that we should legalize necrophilia? I mean, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not where you start. 
right? If you start, and even starting with legalized pot, which you know, frankly, in Keene would I think most people would agree with you about that in, in Keene. Now, uh, Dennis, um, this was the advice you gave us when we moved here in 2006. And uh, when we moved, uh, I think that Ian would agree that he was a lot angrier and a lot less likely to work within the system. Now, his his uh, his opinions have changed over time. But what I did was when I bought a piece of property out in a town that surrounds Keene, as I, uh, I, you know, I started at the fire department. And, I, I, you know, I got on the ballot as uh, at some point or another as a delegate to the state convention, and I've pretty much done these things. Now, I'd like to say that just by dent of who I am, they don't really, they didn't really, you know, they don't really take to, take cotton to me that, out there too much, and they're not going to offer me too many positions or anything like that in the town, but... I don't have the. Well, it's because you're the one guy who goes to the town meeting and votes no on stuff. Yeah, there's that, and I've had a you know a sign out in my yard that uh, you know gives my opinion about um, you know Barack Obama and the 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 Peace Prize and and things like that. So you know, there's to some extent, I I'm probably loud by my town's version of loud, but mm-hmm. I pale in comparison to you guys here in Keene. Well, that's it's, it's an excellent I think case study to compare Keene with other towns where. You don't hear a lot of necessarily blogs and media and, and radio programs from all the other towns, but I think a lot more is getting done in other towns than is getting done in Keene. You know, the, the little town I'm in, tiny little town, we have now, you know, I served as a, as a selectman on the board of selectmen. Another free stater was also on the board of selectmen. In this town, we have taken taxes and gotten rid of them. And it's a very liberal town. It's You've a very gotten rid of taxes? Tax- kind of town. Oh, you have gotten rid of yeah. some taxes. I see what you're saying. Yeah, we've done some very measurable things. And if you ask just about anyone in town, what do you think of the free staters? They'll be like, oh, yeah, that's like Chris and Dennis. We know those people. Well, They're good. So I feel like it's just so easy to try to demonize the people who are voting against more government because the go- if the government already is in charge of handling a lot of um, like central planning things, then, for instance, parking in Keene, then when things... Uh, you know, are run inefficiently, they say, well, it's because there's been cuts to the budget because those free staters are voting against everything. Or they'll make up some excuse like that. And then so all the townspeople, instead of saying, no, city, you make a ridiculous amount of, you take a ridiculous amount of money for us to get this parking situation right, and you have always failed at it. They don't blame the city. They blame people who vote uh, for budget cuts. So how do you avoid that in your town? It's the whole dynamic of starting off with being a helpful person who helps get things done, who is not coming, showing up with a chip on your shoulder and complaining about stuff that people may or may not have complained about. But just, you know, starting off by showing up and doing productive, helpful things and being helpful. And then after that, talking about, hey, here's things we can improve. Here's things that could be better. I personally feel like this, that, the other thing. And just throwing out those little tiny snippets occasionally preferably when asked about morality and the, the bigger pictures about economics and freedom and coercion and zero aggression. You, you can't start off with all that stuff because, you know, yeah. most people, that it, it's just cramming too much down their throat all at once. They hate it, they resent it, and then all they know is they don't like people like you, they're not like you, and they don't care what your ideas are at that point. No, I totally agree with that approach, and that's how I uh, that's the approach that I used when I was getting involved in Occupy Keen was you know just listening to people and then over time getting them to you know uh, to know you a little bit and then they might ask you your opinion on something. That's absolutely what happened. Unfortunately, I don't have that luxury with uh, moving to Keen because you know I host a radio show and my intentions on moving here was to help promote. The activism that was going on, and by by virtue of doing that, you know, obviously got inspired and got involved in it myself. Um, so, you know, I came here with the the idea of promoting the really noteworthy stuff going on, and so the more you promote that stuff, the more people are going to know about it, and the more people are going to have opinions that are negative about it. So it's just so, sort of a natural uh, thing that if you do things that people are going to have uh, opinions about you. I mean, even if you're, you know, if you were to go out as a, as a woman, you're not a woman, Dennis, but if you were to go out and, you know, after having created relationships with these people and, uh, you know, smoke pot and be topless at town square, it probably still would change some people's opinions about you. Oh, absolutely. You know, another item that, that comes up a lot that I really kind of want to set right. A lot is talked about political burnout and people being burned out on politics. But if I look 
at having been here in New Hampshire for, good God, I think eight eight years now, mm-hmm. um, the people I see burning out, dropping out, and moving away from the state are the people who are protesters. And the people who I see who are still there, who are still in office, who got themselves elected, or they're still just doing things in their town, are, you know, these are the really big changes that are actually happening, and they're by the people who... You know, it's they're, true. They're I mean, there's early. definitely a lot of people who've come and gone over the years. Sam Dodson, who was on this show for a long period of time, he's a, probably one of the more noteworthy, noteworthy ones. Uh, Kelly Voluntarius, she But everybody she who's left. done um, some kind of outside-the-system activism is either dropped out or gone. I mean, I'm still here. Okay, everybody but you. You are the glaring example. But there are very few people who have done it for three years. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not a sustainable thing. If you get arrested, nobody. I mean, nobody uh, but you can you. only get arrested so many more times after that. Ademo's still here, by the way, in New Hampshire. So dropped it's not out. A, he it's said, not he, said he has gone into activist retirement. He's yeah. dropped out. No, he's still an activist. He's still doing cop blocks, uh, you know, stuff online. He's online. Still, he's making silver for a living. He's just changed his activism. So there are people here who've come here and. Yeah, but, but don't look, look, Ian. Don't pass off the difference between going and well, shoving a camera in a police officer's face during a traffic stop. I don't know anyone who shoves cameras. In, okay. in anybody's faces. All right, so I shouldn't use that terminology. To filming traffic stops and and um, you know mm-hmm. r- Robin Hooding to running an online uh, blog. I mean, we're talking about something entirely different. That's fine. Ademo has said he's in activist retirement. You and he's can't... come out of activist retirement since then. To so do what? why don't you talk to Ademo? Maybe you'll know what you're talking about. Dennis, thanks for the call tonight. appreciate hearing from you. And the other thing about what Dennis said there is that, of course, it's more noticeable when active activists drop out. They're active. You know what they've done, so it's conspicuous when they're gone. You don't know how many people might have come here for whatever reason, never made a name for themselves, and then also dropped out. Those people exist, too. More coming up. Free Talk Live. Breathe it in, kid. Clean, fresh air thanks to these new air handler filters. They're more energy efficient, hold more dust, and are stronger than ever. And Granger's got over 3,000 different styles and sizes to choose from. Just ordered a new batch from Granger.com today. I love oxygen, kid. And this facility's got some great AO2. I'm breathing easier just thinking about these air handler filters. Get some today. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com slash air handler or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, April 14th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.83 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,324 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $457. Antiwar.com reports, the Obama administration and Israel don't see eye to eye on much these days. And the latest source of tension is the Ukraine regime change and the subsequent dramatic anti-Russian swing in U.S. policy. 
The U.S. assumed Israel would be on board with the shift and has expressed anger at Israel's refusal to support a U.N. General Assembly resolution condemning Russia over Crimea. Israeli officials, for once, are arguing that the situation is none of their business, with Soviet-born Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman staking out a policy of neutrality on the matter. Israel's defense ministry seems to be backing the stance, too, arguing they don't need to automatically endorse the U.S. position. U.S. officials disagree vehemently and were reportedly incensed that Lieberman suggested relations with both the U.S. and Russia were important to retain since the U.S. gives Israel billions annually and Russia does not. In many ways, the split has also been reflected in media coverage of the situation in Ukraine, as U.S. media has dutifully mirrored government claims of Russian aggression and claimed anti-Semitism among the neo-Nazi right sector in Ukraine as a myth. Israel's media, by contrast, has reported extensively on attacks against Ukrainian synagogues and the growing immigration of Jews from the nation. When you purchase gold or silver from Amagi Metals using my affiliate link, gold.fppradio.com, you help fund FPP Radio News. That's gold.fppradio.com. The AP reports, a man opened fire outside a Jewish community center on Sunday, killing two people before driving over to a retirement community a few blocks away and killing someone else. Police arrested the suspect in the parking lot of a nearby elementary school shortly after the shootings, which happened around 1 o'clock in the afternoon in the Kansas City suburb of Overland Park. Authorities declined to release the names of the suspect or the victims pending the notification of their relatives. At a news conference, Overland Park Police Chief John Douglas said the suspect is in his 70s and was not known to area law enforcement before the attacks. A KCTV reporter claimed the man in handcuffs at the scene was yelling about Hitler. The shooting happened the day before the Jewish holiday of Passover. FPP Radio News is brought to you by $6 Shirts. $6 Shirts is one of the top t-shirt companies on the web, and they want to be the t-shirt company for the Bitcoin marketplace. They actually give priority to all Bitcoin orders. Shop $6 Shirts using my affiliate link, 6.fppradio.com, and help support FPP Radio News. That's 6.fppradio.com. NPR reports, initial results from Afghanistan's April 5th presidential election show two candidates, Abdullah Abdullah and Ashraf Ghani, far ahead of their rivals. Election officials released the figures Sunday based on less than 7% of the total vote. Though the samples released Sunday represented a small fraction of the estimated 7 million votes cast, that hasn't stopped the leading candidates from posturing about the final outcome. NPR's Sean Carberry reports from Kabul, the initial results show opposition leader Abdullah Abdullah holding a lead over former finance minister Ashraf Ghani. All of the other candidates are lagging far behind. Election officials caution that the results will shift as more of the votes are tabulated, but a confident Abdullah says he will be the winner. The certified results aren't expected until mid-May, and analysts say it's unlikely that either candidate will get more than 50%, resulting in a runoff between the two. As of today, Abdullah holds the lead with 41.9% and Ghani has 37.6%, according to an Afghan news agency, Kama Press. A runoff would also bring a chance for the main candidates to form allegiances with other political groups, including some of their rivals. Saying that he hopes to create an inclusive government, Abdullah told Reuters, We are in contact not with just one candidate, but also other candidates and politicians in the country. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Seniors thunder into a local high school parking lot like coalition forces entering Baghdad. A substitute teacher just needs to make it to her car before breaking down in tears. And a college freshman tells his roommate there's no need to hide his masturbation from him. And now a week in review that truly requires no introduction. The nation's students announced this week that they have reluctantly agreed to give the American education system yet another chance, saying they hope educators keep their promises of smaller class size, better school supplies, and intensified efforts to raise the country's international math ranking. The nation's students vowed to give the education system one more shot, despite claiming to have been burned many, many times in the past. 
In other news, a man overcomes alcoholism without the help of Jesus, and an outcast student and a lonely teacher have begun a somewhat endearing sexual relationship. And that was a free lesson in top shelf journalism. For more news, videos, and reminders of your insignificance, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, launching into the second hour of the program. Coming up, we can talk about Albuquerque's long history of police abuse, cover-up, and scandal. Been uh, kind of dancing around that subject here and there, and it's pretty uh, pretty awful what's been happening to the folks out in ABQ. Uh, with you in the studio tonight, though, it's Ian. Allie. And Mark. We're talking about approaches to activism and or should people even do activism. Some people are very, very concerned with some of the reception that certain activists have gotten here in the Keene, New Hampshire area. It's one of the more prominent areas for people to kind of make a splash with uh, noteworthy, newsworthy activism. But the other side of getting newsworthy activism is that people see the news and they don't like it. And then they talk trash about you behind your back and that kind of thing. So we'll get back into that story here by Carlos Morales from truthovercomfort.net. He actually came to town and interviewed some some bar patrons on a Friday night about what they think about Free Keen and the activists associated with FreeKeen.com. We'll get back to that first. Liberty Phoenix is in Illinois. Liberty Phoenix, you're on the air. Good evening, you crazy free radicals. Hey. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say, um, has it ever been discussed whether or not to just scrap the whole idea of at 20,000 institute the move and just say, let's just do it now. You're talking about the Free State Project reaching 20,000 signers, people who've pledged to make the move to New Hampshire. Yes, that has been discussed, but since it's kind of always been there, they decided it would look bad to just scrap that. Yeah, Um, I mean, like, try to to think, Liberty Phoenix, think about this for a second. There's a pledge that people signed, and that pledge was, at 20,000, I will pick up my life and move um, within five years when we get 20,000 signers of the Statement of Intent. It's a pledge, not a, excuse me, not a contract. Like, you don't lose, no one comes after you if you don't move when you said you would. Right. So oh, if yeah. if you um, if you just scrap it, what do you say? Do you say that the people that signed up, well, you don't have to move, you don't want to move, but really great things are happening here? Or mm-hmm. do you say that we have changed the number from 20,000 to 15,588, uh, 15, which is actually what we are at today, um, do, and then say- You can't na- change the number. Yeah, Everybody na- agreed to it. Right. Now, now is the time to move. You've got five years. But um, what, they have, what they have done has been, over the last few years, focused on- on encouraging people to move now or to make custom moving declarations. When you sign up for the Free State Project, you can sign up for the kind of the default, I'll move at 20,000, or you can sign up for, I'll move as soon as possible, or like, I'll move after, you know, we reach 17,000. You can kind of customize your, your move trigger now. So that's something else that they've brought in within the last few years to sort of address that, that concern. It just amazes me what's been accomplished and how much um, recognition has has been gotten just with the fifteen hundred people. I mean, um, Jose's or I believe that was Jose uh, um, Valenzuela, or I think what was it the, the Joel article, Valenzuela? Well, Joel Valenzuela, yeah. Um, his, just from the fifteen hundred people that have moved already, and there's so much going on already. If there if even a quarter of the people that have already signed up just were early movers, it would it would just magnify it, I think. You know? Oh, I totally agree. So what are you waiting for? I told you, my kids. I can't leave without my kids. Uh, okay. Yeah, I haven't, heard, I haven't heard anyone who hasn't moved yet, who plans to move, say, I'm waiting for that 20,000. Like, oh, I've heard yeah. it. I've really? Heard it. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Really? Um, David Johnston of BitAngels.co, oh, I believe, yeah. said that he's waiting for the twenty thousand number hmm. to come Interesting. along. Interesting. I think a lot of people are. They, you know, they 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 pledged. Their life has gone on. They yep. don't necessarily. It's not as uh, as important to them as it was. But they, you know, may or may not intend to move when the time comes. When I signed up, I didn't even know what I meant. What that was entirely meant by move. I think move is a sketchy word. Move means to travel through time and space. I could could have come here to, for two weeks. Said, oh yeah, this was an nice vacation, but I'm really not convinced, and leave and have fulfilled everything that I said I was going to do. So, meh, 
you know, I mean, it is what it, it means what it means to people. I don't think I'm with you, Liberty Phoenix. I don't think that the 20,000 number is in and of itself anything special. And I think that we should be encouraging people to move now. And we are. But, you know, I mean, the 20,000 number's there. It's there. It's not going away. We're almost there. We got to reach it. That's all <laughs> we there is to it. got another year or two max probably yeah. before we'll reach that goal. Well, I've actually, my, I'm doing something right now to, oh. uh, to to reach that goal. What's that? Well, I am. Can have, you talk about it? Yeah, we can talk about it. I've uh, pledged to do it. I am going to donate $10 for every signer that is above um, 15588 That's what the number was today when I looked. So every, 10 bucks for every number that's above that on the uh, at 11:59 p.m. on April the 30th. So to, to I'm sorry, St. Jude's uh, Children's Research Hospital. St. Jude, Jude. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, mm-hmm. um, and it's a cancer research hospital for kids. I I'm so lucky that my son is uh, healthy and good looking and smart and everything that everybody thinks about just their kid, like right? Just like daddy. Right, just like daddy, <laughs> <laughs> not like Uncle Ian. And um, the so. <laughs> He, uh, you know, he's, I'm so lucky. I feel lucky. I want to help people who weren't quite as lucky. Um, and, you know, I'm happy to donate that amount. So what's the period of the time frame? It's still April 30th, basically. Okay, and so to the end of the month. If, gotcha. So if you can get your friends and family, this is a great opportunity to talk to them about signing up for the Free State Project, because not only will they be have the opportunity for liberty in their lifetime, but... There's going to be a donation made to uh, St. Jude, in, not in their name, but I mean because of their sign-up. And I'm sure that some people are going to uh, begin matching me, too. Whenever I say this stuff, people are like, yep, I'm with you. So hmm. I, the last time I did this, we had a tremendous week. This is slightly more. This is almost two weeks. This is two weeks. Um, so what I don't was know, it last time? Do you recall? It was 75, and a week was usually 20. Okay. So it was almost four mm-hmm. times a week, um, you know, a four times week. So I don't know what it's going to be like. And Free State Project's getting a lot more signers per week now, too. I'm going to mm-hmm. pay for everybody who signs up that hasn't heard my voice or my offer either. I'm just, you know, it's just a number now to then, and I'm donating. There so, um, yeah, please get your friends and families to sign up. That's wonderful, Mark. So, yeah, Thanks. very generous. Uh, generous. If you haven't signed up yet for the Free State Project, go check it out at freestateproject.org. Phoenix, any other thoughts you want to share? Um, that's about it. I'll save everything else for next week. Thanks for the call. I appreciate <laughs> like hearing I... from you at 855 450 free. So Carlos Morales over at truthovercomfort.net says of his survey, his informal unscientific survey uh, that he performed in the bars of downtown Keene on a Friday night that needless to say, a free Keene has done one thing. It's getting the attention of locals. In order to understand the public's view of the group, I decided to step away from the keyboard warriors and interview individuals in meat space to see their views of Free Keen. I want to put this forward first. This is not should not be taken as a scientific opinion poll. The individuals I spoke to were in the age of uh, age 21 through 35, are willing to go to bars and restaurants on a Friday night, and have lived in Keen for at least six months. All in all, I spoke to a little over 100 people in the night and was a bit startled by their reactions. In order to have a semblance of unbiased reporting while doing these interviews, I stated that I was an out-of-state journalist who was not affiliated with any philosophical or political platform. I asked these two questions. Do you know what Free Keen is? What are your views of them? I did not cloud their judgment by inserting any information that I had about the group. I was not trying to sell them, but rather discover their perception. I headed down Main Street in Keene and popped into a very packed pub named Kilkenny's. As is to be expected from a college town, the place was filled with young adults looking to get trashed. No politics or religion talk is the de facto rule in places like this, but that rule is so boring. I walked up to my first group and uh, stated that I was a journalist. One of them immediately responded, Why the hell would a journalist want to come out to this s-hole? Now, I I wonder what that statement means. I mean, journalists uh, write for all kinds of... Um, or, you know, publications. What you know? Why wouldn't they want to come to that s hole? So I have a couple of things to say. For one thing, Kilkenny's happens to be a local bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are bars where it's mainly college students, so they don't necessarily have a stake in what happens, and they're just there for the college. Uh, sometimes you don't college, think college students go to Kilkenny? Uh, no, I do think they do sometimes, okay. but I think it's a pri- primarily local bar. It's mostly. Gotcha. What do you work. base that on? Because I don't. I, I've been lived there. in town. What's that? <laughs> I've Having been there been too. There. It doesn't look any more or less like a. Well, I used to work. Uh, basically I see young people in, the, in there. How do you tell the difference? Basically, in the you know, the place you were talking about early in the show, Ian, where I worked for two yeah. years, that was very close to Kilkenny's, and I and every time I've been there, it's 
people that I see every day at work. I recognize from work. I feel like I know everyone in there, like on a professional level. But um, so that's going to influence it. But then also, every time I've been there, political conversation comes up. I don't think, I think he's making an assumption, which is fine. Generally, people try to avoid fighting about politics and bars, but it usually does come up in a bar like that. We'll come back with more. You can share your thoughts here. What is it that people in bars think of freekeen.com and the activism that can be kind of controversial? We'll find out more here in moments. You can also take control at 855-450 free. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth slide into a recession or at worst depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government over? extends itself and spends beyond its means. Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. After the USDA unveiled its updated roommate food pyramid earlier this week, Department of Agriculture spokesman Michael Lowry spoke to Onion reporters about just how many servings of someone else's food roommates should be consuming on a day-to-day basis. Under the new guidelines, roommates should eat at least four portions of someone else's grains per day including one to two cups of already opened cereal. Of course, this is all in addition to the eight to 16 swigs of milk and orange juice spaced out over a few days. Lowry emphasized that many aspects of the new roommate food pyramid are unchanged from the previous version, including a recommended daily intake of 24 ounces of lunch meat straight from the bag and five to seven weekly finger scoops of Erica's peanut butter. Remember to limit your intake of sugar and sweets from half open containers, especially if they're Jessica's, cause she'll definitely notice. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want. Toll free. Are the free keen uh, liberty activists botching it up? 
Are we really screwing things up? Uh, are we poisoning the well? Feel free to uh, chime in here. Apparently some bar patrons think so in downtown Keene on a Friday night. We'll get back to Carlos Morales' uh, summary of what his experience was as he went around and asked over 100 people what they thought of Free Keen. We'll continue that here in moments. You can get a pound of coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com for free. Great tasting co- coffee. Um, top 1% grade Arabica coffee. Um, 100% organic, shade-grown, delicious coffee. But what makes BuzzBox coffee different the, from other high-end coffees is their commitment to making life better for people around the world, people in third world countries, people who don't have it as good as you. Not by any stretch of the imagination do they have it as good as you. And and you can make a difference simply by buying your coffee that you normally buy. I'm talking to the coffee drinkers here. I'm not suggesting anybody go out and become a coffee drinker because of this. Um, To you coffee drinkers, you can have great coffee and have it delivered to you and help people around the world. This is a great way to, instead of... You know, fielding guilty a couple of times a year and giving some money to some charity where they just give handouts and people never really learn how to take care of themselves. These micro loans that are financed through World Vision um, that BuzzBox allows Free Talk Live to make available are um, a, a way that they can, you know, buy that sewing machine to make shoes or get that bicycle to do deliveries of food or whatever. This, this, These are small loans to people in third world countries that are going to change their lives. They don't have access to this kind of money. Mm-hmm. The kind of money you lose in a year will change their lives. Yeah. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com, get the free pound by signing up for the subscription, Enjoy it. I think it's going to be four to six weeks. I can't remember how long the duration is. Uh, from then, they're going to send. They're, you're going to be signed up for a subscription. They're going to start sending you coffee. You can select the duration. Yep, you can select the duration yep. initially. I'm not sure, Mark. Okay, Af- over time you can select the duration. I think after your first shipment, I'm not 100 percent sure, but you can select the duration. And uh, you know, if you don't like the coffee, you can stop. You're like, nope, I don't want to do this. This isn't worth it to me. You can st- you can take the free pound, stop the subscription, no problem. Go sign up now. Get your free pound, coffee.freetalklive.com. So Carlos Morales, a uh, new mover to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, has been going to bars in downtown Keene on a Friday night and asking about Free Keene, which is a website I founded back in 2006 to report news, uh, spread you know opinion, information. But it's more of that. It's a phenomenon. I mean, you can't really dodge that Free Keen's a phenomenon. Free Keen's just a website. It's just a blog. There right. are activists who've moved to Keen who've done activism that, for better or for worse, have been associated with Free Keen. But the way Free Keen is used, I think that, like, at least within the, for the locals here, mm-hmm. Free Keen is used to refer to anyone who's taken part in any activism associated with certain individuals. They, like, they would point to you and say, that's... Someone with free keen. That would be an accurate if, statement. But if to they point saw it, you and me walking down the street, they'd say those two are free keen. Like they would be, that would be inaccurate though, because you are not a free keen blogger. Right, but that's how they see it, and that's how right. it's used. And, and I think this is a victory because at one point it was all the free staters are doing mm-hmm. this, and the free staters are doing that. Right, it shifted and, to the free keen, and shifting it over to free keen is a place where it far more belongs than upon that the free state true. project. That much is true. It's good that, that people have been able to make that differentiation. Yeah, and I don't know why you want to play these uh, tremendous semantic games. I mean, there's a lot of people. Well, it's not a game. I mean, when uh, the 420 celebration started up, that was started by Rich Paul, who is now a freaking blogger, but at the time was not. And, uh, and you know, I did not start that, nor did any other free keen blogger. But you but participated it, in it. I participated you and I about reported it. on and, it. And you didn't just report on it because, you know, to suggest that free keen is some kind of unbiased I never news said source. That. No, no, I just, but, but that's kind of the sound of it here. Free keen is used as a podium to shame and right. point it's out. news, you know, opinion, and activism. Lots of, lots of opinions surrounding yeah. the news. Um, Obviously. You broke a few stories, but you have opinion on it. So when your opinion isn't negative... It is positive. And so when you have a positive opinion about something mm-hmm. um, on Free Keen, or one of the bloggers does, it essentially then becomes Free Keen stuff. Yeah, well, I understand why people make the mistake to believe that anything that happens in town is a part of Free Keen, but it's a mistake. Uh, going on, I skirted the question, he says, and asked them about Free Keen. Free Keeners, said one respondent. Those are the guys that do the Robin Hooding thing. The idea sounds nice, but they're all a bunch of jobless pothead Ds that... 
upset meter maids, I'm taking the bar language out of here, yeah. that upset meter maids by yelling at them like they're five years old. Now, that's never, to my knowledge, actually occurred. Um, well, there, uh, Maybe Chris Cantwell right. yelled at some of the meter maids This is maids the difficulty, time, right? But. Like, there was a comedian who rolled through town, um, and, you know, he's, he's he's active in the Free State Project, but he comes through town, he uses the yep. opportunity um, that is presented by the Robin Hooding to go out and, you know, I mean, if you just look at this video as an, uh, as an amusing thing, it's, it's amusing. Funny. It's He's a funny. funny video. And he wasn't rude to uh, the enforcers. Well, he in, used a lot of, uh, of of foul language, but it depends on what your opinion on foul language is. The meter maid appeared to be amused at least some of the time. Right. Maybe he yelled the video. when she hey. was running across the street, like, why are you running or something like that. She but. came off as nervous to me, and it made me feel nervous, actually. Like, I was not amused. But okay, what? everybody's got different opinions. This is right. one of my points. It's Everyone right. yeah. has different but opinions about the media that comes out of this place. It's fair to say that Chris Cantwell has nothing to do with Free Keen. He doesn't it's live true. in New Hampshire. Not um, now. Uh, he's looking at moving back. Uh, uh, fine. He's never been a blogger. He's. I mean, you right. know, he's just. He's. But it doesn't matter. He's well, been dissociated with from from the Keen activist. And there's center. nothing that can stop an agent provocateur from going downtown. And this, by the way, has allegedly happened. Uh, where somebody has been downtown in Keene, they at- they attacked someone, this person, whoever this person was, this long-haired male, uh, shoulder-length hair, went downtown, he allegedly attacked a man on the street, not in a serious manner, but just kind of shoved him or hit him or something like that, not too hard. Or But anyway, this dude, before attacking this guy on the streets, claimed to be a Robin Hooder. So how do you deal with something like that, right. where somebody who, we actually saw a picture of this guy, uh, video footage of the uh, the attack happening, the guy who was attacked had stopped by the house. But not the claim of the Robin Hood, uh, but not the claim of Robin Hooding, right? We couldn't hear the conversation okay. that was going on. So far as I know, the whole thing was manufactured, but I don't, I, you know, we don't know what the truth is. All we know is that a guy stopped by the Keen Activist Center to express his upset with us. And, you know, like, how dare you do this to me, et cetera, you Robin Hooders. And so we were we were bewildered as to what he was talking about. Like, no Robin Hooder would attack you. Well, that's, well maybe that's he was ridiculous. a Robin Hooder. Like, it's not centralized. You don't have to be part of a club well, to no, do Robin Hooding. Well, no, he definitely wasn't a, uh, he wasn't one of our people, if you well, will. We did see the video you could, footage of Anyone the, could be a Robin Hooder. That's my point. Yeah. And is anyone, you know, someone who's an agent provocateur, someone whose job it is to create uh, disharmony, could come to, come downtown Keene and, hey, I'm a Robin Hooder, and just start hitting people or yep. being very, very rude or, you know, peeing in public. While or, also plugging meters. He could be right. do, being so, completely truthful and saying this stuff. So I guess it's kind of... The same guy, by the way, was... I, I looked at the video of this and I thought, gosh, that guy looks familiar, but not because I know who he is. I realized he was the same guy who stole the peace flag off of the front mm. porch of the, the, the radio studio here. One of several <laughs> different people who has over two years stolen several peace flags. But that happened within the same week or two that this guy got attacked in downtown Keene. And so that made me think that this person's an agent provocateur. He's working you know, different angles on this. He's going downtown claiming to be a Robin Hooder, being a jerk. And at the same time, he's stealing a peace flag what off of our do? front porch. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. That's just it. You can't control people. You can only control your message. It's Free Talk Live. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com, or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro-EM1 from Terragonics. Life's getting better. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. 
and they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the Liberty Media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme. Your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want here, toll-free. Talking about activism, though, and some of the controversy that has surrounded uh, some stuff that's happened here in Keene, New Hampshire, which longtime listeners are aware of all of it, because we talk about a, sh- a whole lot of the stuff that goes on here. Uh, some of the controversial civil disobedience and sort of social disobedience, if you will, uh, like you know, being a female and being topless. That's one of the more memorable things that tends to upset people. Uh, that that have opinions about things that have gone on here in Keene. We're going to continue with what uh, Carlos Morales experienced as he questioned bar patrons on a Friday night uh, when he was visiting in town, asking over 100 people what they thought about free Keene. What were their impressions? What do they know about it? That kind of thing. Uh, We'll continue that here. 855-450-FREE if you'd like to join us on the phones. And those phone lines are brought to you by ProXPN. ProXPN is a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data. If you care about online privacy, and you should because the government certainly is interested in knowing what you do, uh, then you should take some steps to protect it. And sometimes it's not just the government you have to be concerned with. Sometimes it's the private corporations that are collecting information and data mining it. So, for instance, your internet service provider is probably logging every website you visit and logging every search term you enter. You can stop that from happening right now. Just take a moment and go to proxpn.com FTL. You can go on any device, uh, w- almost anything. Windows, Macintosh, iOS, Android devices, even Linux. There's a way to get it working with Linux. It's a little bit different, but it's it's actually pretty simple. Pretty much anybody can use ProXPN. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, grab the software, get started with it. You can start for free, but you're going to want to upgrade to premium, uh, which gives you unlimited bandwidth. It allows you to select the server around the world to which you connect 
And you also, with a premium account, can do whatever you want with the account, meaning that you can uh, pro, uh, you can privately torrent, for instance. It's one of the things you can't do with their free account. Uh, and if you are going to privately torrent, then you want to connect to the Netherlands server for the maximum in privacy protection. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL, and when you're ready to order the premium package, use code FTL20. That's FTL20 to get 20% off for the lifetime of the account. And if you pay in Bitcoin for the annual plan, you'll save even more. By the way, using that code FTL20 for the annual plan brings the price down to about 5 bucks a month. So it's an amazing price for great privacy protections. Don't miss out. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and they don't keep records of your online habits there at proxpn.com slash FTL. So back to the bars. Uh, Kilkenny was the first location in downtown Keene where Carlos inquired of bar patrons, what do they think about free Keene? Uh, so he asked one guy, and he identified us correctly, some of us, as the Robin Hooders. But of course, not all Robin Hooders are bloggers at Free Keen, uh, saying that, uh, that it sounds nice what Robin Hooders do, but we're just a bunch of jobless pothead Ds that upset meter maids by yelling at them like they're five years old. And Carlos says, though I initially believed this was simply a one-off callous opinion that wasn't shared by most, I was proven wrong quite quickly. Though not everyone I spoke to in the bar knew who the group was, the people who did had very strong opinions featuring the following flavors. Quote, well, not quotes, but paraphrasing. They're destroying the community. They're just a bunch of potheads. They're rude. They don't have jobs. I and love how the people at the bar on a Friday night <laughs> yep. say Are dismissive of pot. they're just a bunch of potheads. Yeah. Right. And they're a-holes. These were some of the statements made by the 40 or so people I talked to both inside and right outside this fine pub. Many of their views seem to have come from things they had overheard and not actually witnessed. And I think that's probably the most, to me, the most important relevant line in this whole article. That's almost always true. I've in found, your experience? In my experience, like everyone I've talked to who has a strong opinion. And you've talked opinion, to a lot of people. Yeah, who have a strong opinion of freaking, they don't have any idea what they're talking about. They're just like, they're like, like. One of the quotes here is like, oh, I like the idea, but then they're just like reaching for something. I don't like this. And then you ask them. I've heard they're yelling at the parking enforcers. Yeah. You try to clarify like, well, what happened in that situation? And they're just like, yeah. And their mind's not going to change because they don't because want to actually reason. know what happened. Yeah, right. it's, a, it's social a social reason. It's a social reason. Some people that I like and respect have said, have said bad things about them. So mm -hmm. if I want to be in the group, the social group in which I want to be in, um, then I must dislike these other people. And social groups are, are, are constantly defined, always defined about the people they exclude. Mm. You wouldn't have a group if you didn't exclude people. And this is one of the things that I really think that Free, free Keen um, and you know the sort of outside the system activists, whatever terminology you want to use, I don't want to get caught up on semantics what they really fail in is is that sadly they've become the whipping boy they are the um they are, they are the bugbear they are the the scapegoat for everything bad that goes on in the community the traffic enforcement in this town is an abysmal failure parking Enforcement I'm sorry, parking, parking enforcement um, in this town is an abysmal failure. It's terrible. These people have never been in the black. They've never made as much money off of parking meters. They can force you to park on their road that they got for free, and they can't make it work. But somehow or another, it's the fault of the Robin Hooders who just came along in the last couple of years. This is how these groups work. The groups are all about blame and dissociation and, you know, hate. And, and th that's what mm. that's what human groups tend to be about. Well, people don't like change by, you know, it's kind of a general statement about humans as they, uh, at least in our culture, are upset with the idea of things changing on them. And but what it, change are we talking about? The, but the potential for change. The idea of change is uh, is what is uh, it, it, you know it upsets a lot of people, and then those people will make things up. They'll tell lies. I mean, some of the things that I've been following the Stop Free Keen group on Facebook, it just kind of like it's a morning thing I do. Oh, what are they saying today? You know, just go in there and, and amuse myself with the misinformation and the lies and the hatred. Um, but you know, they'll say things. Some people will post things in there that are just obviously something that a Robin Hooder wouldn't do. One woman says that she saw Robin Hooder downtown placing coins in meters that uh, th that had no car at them, or something like that, or like that they would uh, not 
that they would put cards on cars that didn't have expired meters. I mean, there's all kinds of just ridiculous claims that yeah. just don't make sense. Why would a Robin Hooder uh, do those things? I mean, well, they, just, she she was claiming they were taking credit for um, you know the saving of a situation where they didn't need to be saved or something. You know, doing um, public relations, you know, positive public relations for themselves yeah. uh, in the hopes of uh, benefiting. Right. But um, the know, idea I, was that we were being dishonest somehow, and I don't know Robin Hooders to do that. That kind of thing. So there's the, the, this misconception that people have as a result of the just the s talking that they hear their friends do, and it you know makes me wonder. I don't know what Carlos's methodology was here, but I presume he was talking with sort of groups of people rather than people individually. But I wonder if you're at a, a table at this bar and there's five people at the table, and Carlos comes up and asks a question about free keen. If one person at the table is supportive of, you know, liberty activism, but the rest of their friends aren't, what are the odds that they're going to uh, to speak up in a in a social pressure kind of situation like that? It depends on how much they believe in it. That's true. Um, but I mean, if what you're saying is true, then then it should work in the opposite direction. The first person to speak up at a table yeah, um, that true. positively said something, you know, the numbers once you get to them here are staggering in um, in in the fact that they just people seem to roundly hate free keen for feeding their meters. You go well, around again. You don't know what the issue is. He did not ask that question he only asked generic questions aren't they the ones that bother the cops and, his, and chase the parking meters isn't that what they two say question there's one person who said that uh there's, there's different responses here he's two questions were do you know what free keen is and what are your views on them that's it he didn't specifically ask them what is it that they did that you disagreed with anyway many of their views he says came from things they had overheard and not actually witnessed and no doubt there would be an inherent bias to every bias every time a story was told about the free keeners but even eyewitness reports were viewed in an equally harsh light one thing i found unnerving was that the majority of them didn't even know the philosophy behind free keen but I attribute that to the presentation methods by the activists and not the recipients of the message. Well, I wonder about that because uh, Freekeen has uh, tried very hard to uh, market itself. Um, for instance, you have uh, uh, some marketing pieces on the tables at uh, a diner That's in right. town. A very popular so, diner in town. Yeah. And I mean, diners are where people go who uh, often, you know, the morning after going out to drink. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, diners are a place to go. These things are on the table. They can't be avoided if you look at them. They're colorful. I don't know. I mean, you know, what other marketing could Free Keen possibly and do it, as a group? And those and sp specifically actually say, like, what we're for, what we're against. And they it's do. very clear. They're great. But most of these people who have just heard things about us, they've probably never been to the website. So they've never clicked on, you know, learn about Free Keen, about the Everybody website. Have they to a diner? More coming up here. You can take control. It's Free Talk Live. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. If you've got aches and pain and soreness, it could be chronic inflammation. Listen to Dave talk about Relief Factor 4. I was in a sawmill accident and suffered with pain and discomfort for 60 years. I heard about Relief Factor 4 and decided to order it. And in four days, I was walking without a limp and without pain. I am thrilled. For more information or to order Relief Factor 4, go online at relieffactor4.com. That's relieffactor4.com. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. 
Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your cat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at JuicyJuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kids should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, take control toll-free here of the numbers are 855-450-FREE, and you can bring up anything that you want. We are focused tonight on people's opinions about activism, most of them uninformed, partially uninformed, mostly uninformed, usually somewhere on that spectrum, about some of the stuff going on here in Keene, New Hampshire, of which we've reported on a lot of it over the years here on Free Talk Live. Of course, how informed they are is really irrelevant to the conversation of whether or not you're changing hearts and minds with your activism. Yeah. Well, the activism uh, is not necessarily to change hearts and minds. Uh, activism, in a lot of cases, is to Successful. Bring, uh, <laughs> is to bring attention to an issue uh, or to bring attention to the activism, like for the purpose well, of, for instance, you know, showing people what's happening here in Keene, New Hampshire, showing people around the world uh, what, you know, sort of an exciting Hold on, Ian, that doesn't even make any sense. So if your activism is to bring attention to an issue, and the kind of attention you're bringing is the opposite attention from uh, people with the opposite uh, opinion, attention of the people with opposite opinions of yours, your activism kind of stinks, doesn't it? I don't know if that's what I said. I said it well, brings attention. Well, you're saying that the purpose of activism, activism is to bring attention, attention to an issue. To an issue. People make decisions for themselves how they feel about that issue. So some people support uh, ending cannabis prohibition. They're probably going to feel pretty good about uh, people smoking in the park. I don't Ooh, think so. I've heard lots of people who support um, ending cannabis prohibition saying don't things like, that hey, stop trying to help us. You're ruining yeah. the, our opportunities. I've heard that too. So what are, the big, what are the main stories as far as having gotten like the most attention uh, across the world as a country. Robin Hooding's the number one most attended yep. sort of news. And the only thing that's happened is, recently. Activism. Is there anything else too? Because I know the Robin Hooding story was very positive. You're asking about international in the media. press. Yeah. Uh, Robin Hood was 
pretty big. 420 would have been after that. 420, I think, would and probably how was, be after that. Yeah. how was the press on the 420 events? The 420 you know, activism positive. was hundreds of people, um, well, at least 100 people in one case in, in Keene, New Hampshire, uh, at 420 in the afternoon at a park smoking, smoking marijuana. Smoking cannabis openly, yeah. I mean, a lot of the media coverage is positive, uh, but that's because they don't you know, interview the people that hate what they see. Well, right. They never do when you, know, you hear these stories about a town. Sometimes you'll hear like one person's opinion but uh, from the town, but usually... When freaking gets like the farther reaching the story is, the more positive a spin there is on it. It's true. And just like I don't. Although the New York Times article is going to be different because the the New York Times columnist who came to town recently to report on Free Keen, uh, he's very well researched and he knows mm-hmm. about the opposition to the Robin Hooding, and so I think he's going to give a much more thorough uh, look in, into the issue. But most of these news media are just kind of they're just skirting the topic. You know, they're just kind of going over the very little bits of information about it. They're not really just wander deep. around in the group and say, "Hey, what do you think? What do you think? What do you yeah. think?" It doesn't really, it doesn't necessarily make sense to trust the opinions of locals about what should people do or not do. I mean, I understand seniority and everything, but it's not like I mean. Things are changing all the time. You don't get to, just like you don't get to choose who goes Robin Hooding, you don't get to choose who moves into your town. You don't get to choose how how everyone behaves. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, I think that even if it is that people don't like the way certain people they associate with Rekeen are behaving and they want to try to use the law to, like, squelch that behavior, I think that it's a good thing to at least talk about like well if we're gonna start making rules about how each other ought to behave then don't you think that there's some violence that we should have we should Mm -hmm. like get rid of first you know like people getting robbed we're seen as the troublemakers because the people who see us that way they don't see the state as troublemakers they don't see the state as aggressors they see them as just people with jobs and so when with the robin hooding case for instance uh, you know, we're accused of being bad and harassing the parking enforcers, which is a libelous, um, a slanderous statement to make. Um, uh, and but nobody takes them up on it. And this is one of the things that the sort of the principled uh, liberty activists in Keene, New Hampshire, you know, they don't they believe that somebody should be able to slander or libel somebody. So that's that's a freedom of speech. So they don't take somebody up on slander or libel and use the laws that the statists, um, you know, are breaking. Hey, everybody them. who wants to do that so bad should do it. I mean, if you want to sue somebody for slander, Mark, you should do that then. No, I don't think you me. I have go, no standing. Go ahead and uh, put, put a meter, uh, you know, a nickel in a meter, and then all of a sudden you're a Robin Hooder. Um, but you'll, ha- you'll have standing at that point. I, I guess. Um, I so, think I mean, for all the talk, be- you know, people can do what they want as far as that's concerned. But I think that it's worth pointing out that there's other activism going on in, in other places in New Hampshire that is having a great deal of effect, a great deal of positive effect, and isn't having the negative effect. And well, it depends who you ask. What do you mean? There's plenty of people who oppose the political action here in New Hampshire. Yeah, they do. But what do you mean? What do you mean? Like the other po- political groups? Other political yeah, groups, but and they those don't people have, a, have friends as a percentage too. of the population. You, um, when you get to the bottom of this article, you'll say, you'll, you'll, um, he'll, he'll say that he went to Manchester, interviewed 60 people, mm-hmm. three of whom had heard about the Free State Project. That's a much yep. smaller percentage of people that had heard about uh, Free Keen. He says 37 versus- out of 70 actually uh, had heard of Free Keen. Um, in Keen. Okay, so I thought it was, yeah, okay, fine. I thought the numbers were a little different than that, uh, but that's fine. So th- um, here you're talking about- Oh, no, maybe it was 37 out of 70 who knew who the free Keen people were. So that's about half. I'm not sure what that means as comparison to who knew what free Keen okay, was. Okay, so it's, it's about half of the people had heard of free Keen, yeah. and of them, it was a 94% or so, um, you know, 90-something percent. Well, I can read the numbers here. He, uh, he says he walked to another bar- Heard music blasting from a bar that seems to be packed with a lot of opinions, but very little logic. As much as I want the survey to be filled with enlightened intellectual views, the Keene State College's extroverted community doesn't seem to be offering much. I counted 37 out of 70 individuals who actually knew who the Free Keene people were, and yet again, it was more of the same. That's the bar. That's that bar. So Ah, he said that he interviewed um, close to 100 people. He gets to that here in a moment. And yet again, it was more the same negative views towards those jobless hippies that are ruining the city. 
I do find it funny that people who regularly blast music while loading up on liquid stupidity and courage and then driving 60 miles an hour in a death metal box in a small town contem- <laughs> condemn others for ruining a city. But I digress, since this was simply meant to be a poll of these fine folks' views, and I wasn't there to sway their views. Upon leaving that bar, a group called me over because they'd heard of what I was doing. Finally, a positive response to the organization. One college girl stated that the Robin Hooders were nice to her and helped prevent her from getting a ticket. One of her male friends concurred and stated they that that they believe what the free keen activists are doing is right, though he didn't give much detail on what the free keeners were actually striving for. I headed to two more pubs, and I think it's interesting that those people approached him outside the bar. I headed to more pubs, and the negativity sparked yet again. More of the same rumor-based banter and hostility that had been the theme of the night continued. And at this point, I surmised that this in, uh, that indeed this particular group of individuals was not sold on the freedom-oriented group. Out of the 150 people I spoke to, a little under 100 knew what Free Keen was. So, so about like two-thirds. 60, yeah, about two-thirds had heard of Free Keen. That's a much larger penetration than the Free State Project had in the, New ha- in the uh, Manchester Poland. Um, data. That's right. Yeah. Out of those hundred people, I had three positive responses to Free Keener's activities. In comparison, when I spoke to people in Manchester about the Free State Project, out of 60 people, only three knew what the Free State Project was, and their view was positive. So you have ten times the penetration of um, of brand recognition of Free Keen over the Free State Project in Keen over uh, Man- Manchester, and... Um, Let's see, Manchester, of the people that had heard, it was 100% positive res, um, reaction, and in Keene, it was 97% negative reaction. Your brand sucks, and you've got to confront this. If you don't confront the fact that you're going the wrong direction, you won't know to stop, What's the, how do you know turn it's the wrong around, direction? and head the wrong direction. Because of the numbers you've I just gave you. have made this claim for years. So some no, barflies don't like Ian. free Keene. Uh, well, that's, what, what, you're, what you just said is completely inaccurate. I made that claim um, until the, the Robin Hood activism... Because because I thought you guys had turned around your message. I had heard good things about Robin Hood. Robin and wait Hood's a second, wait a second, I'm not done talking. Um, and I thought that it was really, I really thought, really, really thought that you were going to get numbers like 50-50. You're giving these people free money and they hate you. You've got well, a terrible brand problem. Uh, first of all, Mark, there. this is just an interview of people that were in a bar on uh, Friday night, a few bars on a Friday night. It's Your very, demographic, very young limited. people. But it doesn't matter. Even if people have preconceived misconceptions about uh, free keen, I don't really, you know, that's irrelevant to me. You're, what's saying your goal? It's a fa- you're saying it's a failure, but we've succeeded at bringing people to New Hampshire who love the ideas of liberty. That's one of my primary goals with free keen is to advertise the great activism that's going on here. I'm not concerned with what uh, what people think about the different things that we've done because Robin Hooding is positive activism plenty of people do love uh, Robin Hood there's evidence for that by the virtue of the fact that they send donations in and thank you notes into the Robin Hooders you know they give hugs and thanks and appreciation on the streets regularly it's so interesting to me that Keen probably documents his activism more than any other community in that mm-hmm. there's always video cameras around when people are doing activism that that's like a big part of it and there's still so much misinformation when these people with such strong opinions can easily just go look and They've see what looked. they're talking about most of these people have probably never once been Irrelevant. to freekeen.com if your brand sucks your brand sucks well, it depends who you about ask. Perception. It depends on who you ask. 855-450 freeze the toll-free number. And what would you suggest I change? Shut it down? Stop yeah. doing activism? More on the way here. Hour three is next. You can take control. Free Talk Live. I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works. Australian Dream. It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee, so you can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. You'll be glad you did. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T dot com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the real 
to Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com you're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, April 14th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,323, silver opened at $19.81, and Bitcoin is trading at $459.40. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Online at affordablesound.com or call them at 512-459-5253. In the news, a former employee is alleging that Britain's largest drug company bribed doctors to prescribe their medications in Europe. The Telegraph reports that the former GlaxoSmithKline sales representative claims that Polish doctors were paid to promote the company's asthma drug. An investigation has been launched and the BBC reports that 11 doctors and a GlaxoSmithKline regional manager have been charged for their involvement in the scheme. The company has also been accused of bribery in China and Iraq. Minor earthquakes beneath the Appalachians have been linked to fracking. The finding comes through work conducted by Ohio geologists, according to the Associated Press. The discovery is being touted as the first time tremors have been directly associated with fracking. The five small quakes happened last month near Youngstown. On Thursday, the United States Sentencing Commission voted to reduce federal prison sentences for most drug offenses. The commission stated that the move would reduce the federal prison population by 6,500 inmates over the next five years. The changes are expected to reduce the average sentence for drug offenders by 11 months. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM. June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show. Live Friday nights at 9 o'clock central at coreymoreshow.com. And support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts and Roberts Brokerage Incorporated. Precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977. Online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, April 14th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Flooding is reported at Japan's Fukushima power plant, where a pump apparently flooded the basements with highly contaminated cooling tank water. Russia Today reports that around 200 tons of water ended up flooding the basements beneath the complex. The water was contained to that location and was unable to leak to other areas or escape into the ocean. On Thursday, thousands of activists in Mexico City marched from the headquarters of the country's largest broadcaster to the Senate to protest a new law they say would increase government surveillance and censorship. The director of CINCOS, a Mexican human rights nonprofit, said the bill would allow government to censor certain types of Internet content related to good customs, life, and other moral concepts that are very ambiguous. Critics say the new legislation will also allow the Mexican government to block cell phone signals, censor websites without judicial approval, as well as block the creation of independent public media outlets. The legislation will go before Mexico's Senate in the coming weeks. 
On Sunday, an estimated 5,000 Russians rallied to Moscow to protest an increased government crackdown in independent media. Protesters worry that the Russian government is silencing dissent after the recent annexation of eastern Ukraine. The Russian government has been accused of removing an editor from a well-known internet news site and taking down an independent television channel. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, CHL courses, self-defense training, and firearm sales. Give them a call, 512-731-3585, or find them online, centraltexasgunworks.com. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwest Burritos with homemade tortillas, online at cabobobs.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, April 14th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. The dangerous winter storm Rocky is expected to pummel the Midwest throughout the day with meteorologists predicting the blizzard will hit Kevin Hodges of Joliet, Illinois the hardest given the way his year's been going. Yeah, we're stocking up on everything. I think school's going to be canceled. We're just glad we're not Kevin right now. Joining us now is Jordan Blake in Chicago. Hello, Jordan. Just how crippling will this storm be for Kevin? Well, we've already seen a lot of damage. A motorist in Kansas trapped in their cars on the freeway. That's nothing compared to the emotional damage Hodges can expect. Having to deal with a sick cat, frustrating new hours at work, and a confusing breakup all in the past six months. You know, we're getting reports that he recently loaned $600 to a friend who has no intention of paying him back and slammed his finger in a car door last month. Does the National Weather Service have any advice for Kevin today? Not much he can do. The sky is really vulnerable right now. Authorities are recommending that he just stay indoors and think about his mistakes. That sounds like good advice. You know, he looks like a real sad piece of sh**. Stay warm out there, Jordan. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you'd like. Toll free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. As we launch here into the third hour of the program, we'll take your calls about anything. You can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. We've been really digging into an article by Carlos Morales tonight. We're going to continue with it, almost done with it here. Uh, but it brings up some big questions about activist approaches and you know how best to foment change, if that's what we're really looking to do, is to change what we have into a peaceful society, a, a consensual society. And, uh, and I think that's what most of us, at least liberty-oriented people, are looking to do. But we know we have to change people's minds first. And some initial evidence uh, from some unscientific research done by Carlos Miller at some local bars Morales. here in Kenu. Sorry, Carlos Morales. Very t- two cool Carloses. It's, <laughs> I did mix the, the last names up. But uh, anyway, some unscientific research reveals that certain people uh, in bars, the supermajority of them who have heard of Free Keen, uh, which is my website, freekeen.com, uh, that uh, they don't like what they've heard. And we'll continue with that here. But Rob is in Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Ali, and Mark. Hey, Rob. Hey, I'm, I'm really excited that you do your re- research in bars. That's, that's really cool. I didn't do any research, actually. That was Carlos Morales. But go ahead. I'm all, all right. for bar research, though. Yeah. Well, I'm calling about this thing called the Treasury Offset Program. Well, that sounds exciting. Somebody slipped up. Yeah, somebody slipped a one-liner into the 2008 Farm Bill, and it says the federal government can go after you for debt forever. The the the, uh, the limit had been 10 years before. Are you talking about student so loans? Social... No, no. So yeah, they're a special category. Okay. Not not on student loans. Okay. But the Social Security Administration has been going after people for overpayments of their dead parents. Yeah, I've got this story um, mm. and lined up for show prep. Meaning that the Social Security office is cutting checks to people they don't know are dead, and people are cashing those checks? Well, not even that. No, no. It's just like the Social Security Administration makes an error, mm-hmm. and they over it's a clerical error on their fault. They overpay your dad in 1960. Your dad dies in 1961. They hit you in 2012. Oh, wow. And, and take $1,000, take your $3,000. I mean, that's. Wow. This English common law back to 1200, you can't take the debt of of people's uh, you know, project. Their offspring. Oh my god. They, did, they just they just stopped this today. But they only stopped it just on the discretion of the Social Security Administration guy. Cuz it looks bad. You know, oh, yeah, I mean it, 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 
the fact that they would do that, that they would wow. go after you for debt, it's not a debt. They're calling it a debt in all the stories in the Washington Post. It's not a debt. It's an error created by the Social Security Administration themselves. They That's pay crazy. You to, to your grandfather too much, and then 50 years later, they're taking your refund, and they just stop it on their own discretion. It's nuts. I thought I'd bring it to your attention. Yeah, that is crazy. And so that means they could start doing it again anytime they want to, just like, you know, they could start picking on the Bundy family ranch again anytime they want to because they've got unlimited funding compared to you and I, and they can do what they want. I guess that's just more reason to not pay into the Social Security program in the first place, huh? Well, I was going to make that connection myself. They're just sort of suspending their tyranny. But uh, in my local office here, the Social Security office has an armed guard with a pistol. Mm -hmm. Wow. Same thing in in the Virginia DMV, and I'm just at, I, my question for you is: Can you name me like a private business where you go in and the potential is so horrible for the people doing the job so bad that they have to have a guy with a gun to stop you from coming over the counter? Well, I well mean, you I know, banks bank, are uh, sometimes have security guards depending on yeah. what to- customer service at banks uh, rivals the customer service from uh, governments. I mean, you clubs know. could have armed mm-hmm. security as well. Well, also, could you imagine going into a retailer and buying some stuff and then having them call you and say, "Oh, you underpaid for your stuff"? No. Mm-hmm. Now, now you have to pay. You're in <laughs> yeah. debt to us. No, that's it's crazy. an outrage. And they jack it right from your bank account, and rather than just calling. Hey, thanks, Rob, for bringing and that the bank to the table. cooperates. I appreciate hearing from you tonight. Eight fifty five four fifty three. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. You know they do what they want, and they usually get away with it. Thank goodness, uh, some attention was brought to this particular issue to put a stop to them this time. So Carlos Morales wraps up his thoughts over at truthovercomfort.net on his article where he compares his experience talking to people sort of on the street, in this case in bars. I'm not sure if his Manchester interviews were done in bars. He doesn't make that clear, but he also spoke with people in Manchester. Yes, I believe they were. They were. I mean, the guys just had had just been in the state for a couple of days at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure he's... Yeah, I mean, you know, how many how many places can he be? Yeah, bars. Well, I mean, you can go on the streets too. You can just talk to people on the streets. Sure. Uh, so anyway, he went into bars and he said he spoke to 150 people. Little under 100 of them knew what Free Keen was, and Free Keen's a, a website I created to report on and feature some of the activism that's going on here in New Hampshire. He says, out of those 100 people, I had three positive responses to Free Keener's activities. In comparison, when I spoke to people in Manchester about the Free State Project, out of 60 people, only three knew what the Free State Project was, and their view was positive. So three out of 50? Three out of 60. 60 knew what the Free State Project was. So a market penetration of something like 5%. Mm Mm-hmm. Versus a market penetration of something like 66%. Yeah. And a positive, um, uh, you know, brand recognition, uh, not brand recognition, positive brand, uh, you know, recall at 100% versus positive brand recall or negative brand recall at something like 97%. Now, what they say, I don't know if this is true. I didn't like go to school for marketing or anything, but they claim that it's not so important what people's opinion is of you as long as people are talking about you. And it kind of seems like when you look at, you know, really... Uh, well-to-do celebrities that they seem to do okay even when a lot of the press is negative about them. If what your business is is to get attention, yeah, that's the case. but they're not trying to change hearts and now, minds. Now, Free Talk right? Live's, t- um, a, you know, you could make the claim that Free Talk Live, a radio program, or LRN.FM, a radio, um, a, a, um, a radio network, or even Free Keen, a blog's job is to get attention. But you really can't make the argument that the Free State Project, whose, real, whose job, because you can't get move 20,000 people to a state of 1.4 million and take over over. So you must be here to change hearts and minds. Right. If the job of the Free State Project is to change hearts and minds, then it would appear as though, from my, you know, my estimation, that the Robin Hooders and Free Keen are failing to do that. I did not believe this before I heard the numbers that came from Carlos Morales. But once I hear these numbers, even if you cut these numbers in half, you say he exaggerated. He must have gotten his numbers wrong. That's fine. Let's cut these numbers in half. We're still talking about a tremendously bad uh, brand recognition. And it, the first thing to do when you realize you're going in the wrong direction is to stop. Yeah, you keep saying it's the wrong direction, but you then don't tell have me what any the right suggestions. Direction is. 
You don't have any suggestions as to what people could do differently. I do have a suggestion. You won't let me speak. Once I start talking. speaking this whole time. Once I start talk- talking, you want to interrupt every single time. So I will tell you, the fact is we can see in every other place around the state, if you get politically involved, you get mm-hmm. involved in your community in a positive way, you volunteer that you're going people to People have- do that here. And the people they connect with get to know them as good people. But your brand recognition sucks. And the reason is, is I, I'm, I'm sorry, Ian, this is news to me but once it's news once i accept it as fact i have to accept it right um the you know if you do what they do elsewhere you will have the results they've had Mm -hmm. which is to say um dozens and dozens maybe hundreds of liberty activists elected to positions that have real sway rather than having essentially no sway an incredibly negative uh reaction here in Keene. okay so what you're saying is just run for political office I, I would recommend uh, first off that uh, so if, you if you're so you throw stay Derek J out right you throw Derek J out I wouldn't throw anybody would, would you out. throw Tyler uh, out one of the movers to what uh, do you Manchester mean throw him out well these are people who probably wouldn't have come here had it not been for the civil disobedience activism now I'm gonna give you a couple of examples here Derek J moved to New Hampshire he's a great friend of the shows everybody I think on this show loves Derek J that's right yep. uh, Derek J is producing Peace News now which is a great product out there uh, it's a it's a radio show that you know, is focusing on peaceful uh, evolution and things like that, and he's done amazing activism. He's doing great media now, and he's a part of he's a part of this movement and is coming back to Keene next month because of the inspiring civil disobedience that happened here. But civil disobedience doesn't just attract the civilly disobedient; it also attracts people who appreciate it, but they want to support from the background or they just want to focus somewhere else with their efforts. There's a guy who moved named Tyler. He and his wife are purchasing a house. In uh, a town in New Hampshire, they're going to have a big moving party, and he's a very politically active person. He thanked Derek J at the Liberty Forum for everything that he's done, uh, civil disobedience-wise, because it was that exciting activism that attracted him here to New Hampshire. So if you say, stop doing what we're doing, you're saying cutting out a lot of great activists who wouldn't have otherwise come here. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well... Yes, now there is, and it's at BitcoinGeneralStore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything, with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. Amanda Bosold here from Midas Resources. Today, April 4th, 2014, gold opened at $1297.60. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for $1344.77, $672.38 for a half ounce, or $336.19 for a quarter ounce. Again, that's $1344.77, $672.38, and $336.19. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. 
It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want here. Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Mark says, you free keeners, you need to quit doing what you've been doing and just get put on a suit and run for political office. Now, Allie, uh, you've worked in a, long, a, a corner store here in Keene, New Hampshire. That's and right. You're, you're listening to some of these numbers that we've been talking about tonight where uh, people who are bar, are bar patrons, ages 21 to 35 roughly, uh, bar patrons on a Friday night in Keene, are talking some trash about Free Keen, which is uh, the blog that I created that sort of uh, keeps track of a lot of the activism happening in both Keene and Manchester and around the state. And uh, it, does that reflect your experience in having talked to people on the streets of Keene? It does. It does reflect my experience. I would say that uh, it doesn't surprise me that going around asking if people are familiar with Free Keen and what their opinion are in um, is of it would get these kinds of results. That's what I would expect to see. Mm-hmm. But uh, when when I've met people and they don't think that I have, they don't realize I have anything to do with you, Ian, or like that we do. If they knew we did a radio show together, their opinion about freaking might be a little bit softer. Mm-hmm. But when they know that I, uh, if they know that I've been like on freaking TV or anything like that, does that make me? part of freaking if i've been on freaking tv even though i haven't blogged for there. anybody else yeah i think most people would think that yeah that's a good so point. uh i don't know but they tend to not really have a lot of negative things to say is that because they don't want to hurt your feelings do you think? i don't know i don't yeah, well, know yeah, i think that that's pretty common because I, I love the idea that uh, carlos went out as sort of a, a reporter from yeah. outside because ali you're an attractive woman scale of Thank one you. to ten what do you think nine Drate myself nine point seven I don't. I wouldn't. pretty hot. So oh, thank you. Um, the uh, you know when your average guy goes into a uh, you know place where he buys cigarettes, uh, beer, and um, water pipes. Right? I think I'm a dime, but that's right. fine. <laughs> You're full on ten. Yeah. Yeah, straight ten. That's excellent. You might as well Obviously. go that way, right? There's no way. I mean, there's no reason not to. <laughs> Um, the so the guy goes in there. He sees a very attractive young lady um, who suddenly he can easily say positive things about her her peer group. I, I mean, you know, people tend to be that way. They want to be nice to you because people tend to want attractive women to like well, them. Well, what I hear a lot is it's not even really that it's not even really that negative as far as their philosophical opinions a lot of times like say it has something to do with some free staters doing something gun rights related they Mm -hmm. might even say i'm all for gun rights and then go a little bit into their opinion about that and then criticize the activism but is if the battles for hearts and minds then you kind of won that in in the sense that if you're talking about wanting to change people's opinions about guns 
right? I don't know if the activism is responsible for it. They would, no one wants to claim that their mind was changed. Everyone thinks that the opinions they have now, they've always been that enlightened. Most people won't admit yeah. that something changed their mind, especially if it's something controversial. People change their minds all the time about things. Mm-hmm. If you, even if they hate an activist's guts, if they understand the intention behind what they're doing is something that they agree with, then they'll point they'll point that out to you, and then they'll criticize the activist, which is fine. I, I the one of those common refrains has to be I agree with a lot of what you guys stand for. But I hear that all the time. I don't like da 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 da. If they agree and with then, what with what we or, stand for, then or I don't like the way you go about it. Is usually the kind of the common refrain. And then when uh, you ask them for more information, which Carlos didn't really dig in. Uh, he just asked two basic questions about Free Keen. When you ask more information, well, what is it that you disagree with? Okay, it's great that you like a lot of what we stand for. What is it with which, you know, do you disagree? And it'll be different depending on the person. Uh, well, you know, of, maybe it was the topless uh, event. Well, maybe it was th- that the was back in the past. Which you're but gonna people hear now. still bring that stuff up sometimes. Um, but what you're going to hear now is, um, and I don't like them yelling at the harassing the meter maids. Which um, you know, uh, the what isn't harassment a legal term? It and is. Um, that that was uh, stated by some of the city officials, yeah. which is slanderous and probably they probably so should be sued for. Then you would ask a question it. like, well, have you ever actually seen that happen? And, of course, the supermajority of them will say, no, they've never seen anything like that. They've just heard things. Eric's in Kansas. And how do you, do, how do you, you know, how do you con- counteract that? I think all you can do is just get involved in the community, make connections with people at work, at play, at church, at, you know, volunteering, and Most get to know people. Most people that are connected in the community um, aren't Robin Hooders. Robin Hooders tend to do this as a full-time job. That's not true. Uh, D- uh, Garrett and uh, James went out to do Green Keen this weekend, and not one of the, hate- the haters were I there, by jobs. the way. You said talked about getting a job. Lots of people have jobs. Anyway, Eric, and uh, you're on they disagree with this activism. What? what? The, uh, uh, well, can you hear me okay? Go ahead. Yeah, Eric, go ahead. Uh, um, it's all been interesting. I, I just don't uh, – I think we should not uh, lose sight of the forest just because we see a bunch of trees. Um, the activism, it, it's, it's not to get everybody to, to like you so much. I mean, uh, the founding fathers back in 1775 were not very popular. Or people, uh, A lot of people didn't like what they were doing. Okay? The, the goal of activism is will it bring liberty or not? And, and so that's that's the main goal. We need to, to remember that we're focused on. Yeah, well, my, my main focus at this point is to bring people to New Hampshire so they can get involved in their community, so they can, you know, do various different forms of activism. What here. I'm concerned with when I hear this, though, is is that prior to having this, um, you know, this stuff, uh, you know, this information that came forward, I wonder, Ian, if you would have agreed with me that one of my goals when I moved here was to change hearts and minds. And if that is your goal then th- it it apparently is failing abysmally so if you're driving to no, um, not. if I've you're th- driving to Las Vegas and then you find out you're on the way to Phoenix and you change your mind oh yeah i want to go to Phoenix you aren't you, i mean you're just changing goals in midstream you're not changing anything about what you do no mark if, the apparently step number this information one, step number 1 is move people to New Hampshire Step number two is question mark. That's the activism part. And then step number three is freedom, right? So let's move people to New Hampshire. And if we can change some hearts and minds uh, in the meantime, that's a good thing, too. And there are plenty of people that like Free Keen and what it is that we do here. So all you've got is evidence that some people on a bar and a few bars on a Friday night don't like, uh, don't like it. And it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, what those people think, because I think that people's minds can change, as Allie was saying, that over time, maybe they'll hate me forever, but if they like Allie and they like you or they like somebody else that they meet who's a uh, Free State Project participant, then that's that's going to move towards good things, I think. Eric, any other thoughts you want to share tonight? Uh, just the, the one last thing is that if the activism does bring liberty, that itself will change our well, we're not going to get it's to hard. liberty unless hearts and minds change. You're it's not going to be able to, to force freedom on people. Thank you, Eric, for your call tonight. Yeah, it's hard to know when you're being effective at bringing about more liberty because, like, the way you say that, like, there's not a society, there's just individuals. I think that sometimes that's true, but I think that that's especially true when it comes to liberty because, you know, there's some humans who are more free than others and how one. Uh, measures liberty in their life just sort of depends right so if like you no one had to experience tax or like you stopped paying taxes once you were 30 years old if that's how it worked then you'd experience more liberty after you were 30 but Mm -hmm. still 
all the people under 30 are getting taxed. So it's it just depends on person to person. Like, you pay more property tax if you live in Keene. Some people want the liberty of not having to see a woman topless in downtown Keene. And, I mean, how know. does how does living in one of the places that's most taxed in New Hampshire going to affect people's perception of a libertarian movement? We'll come back with more here. You can share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pillow, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pillow. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. Or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions... The best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. There is no such thing as attention span, according to Jerry Seinfeld, who figures that people have an infinite attention span if you are entertaining them. Hey, he's kept us from channel surfing for several decades, and now he's making more millions as a Las Vegas headliner. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're looking for work. So choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Avoid redundancies such as added bonus, advance warning, end result, prior history, or personal belongings. And avoid cliches like the plague. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up what you want here, toll free. 
What way is the right way to do activism? 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number tonight. It's kind of the general topic that we've been discussing. Has Free Keen, a website that reports on activism, but has somehow been conflated with all of the activism that goes on. Uh, has Free Keen poisoned the well? And is there any unpoisoning the well? Is the well as poisoned as people think that it is? What's and the well, and does it matter if the well's poisoned? All of these are good questions. I don't know if there are any solid answers, but we'd love to hear your thoughts. 855-450-FREE. Here's something that's solid. The blockchain.info wallet. I just saw news today that blockchain has surpassed 1.5 million yep. wallets, and it was just, what, December when they hit a million? Uh, so growth, right. pretty awesome there over at blockchain.info. Blockchain.info is the number one Bitcoin site, from what I can tell. Um, I don't know that for certain. I don't have numbers. From Certainly all the of number them. one Bitcoin wallet site. That's Good what I Lord. use. Um, you know, may, <clears throat> maybe Coinbase. They're, they're, they've, they've got a big claim to fame. Mount Gox, thank God they're dead. Um, I think Coinbase <laughs> is bigger as far as like merchant services. That's mm -hmm. what Coinbase is really set up to do. And blockchain actually just launched a merchant uh, feature as well. Like if you go to blockchain, normally we advertise blockchain.info, but if you go to blockchain.com. Is that ready for prime time now? They actually have, well, I've, I can't use it because it won't work on my phone. But if you've got a, a newer phone with like the Android, uh, newer Android operating systems, then it will work for you. So uh, if you've been waiting on the blockchain merchant app, they now have that, which is very exciting. So blockchain.info, that's where you can go and get a free Bitcoin wallet. It is encrypted in your browser, so it's safe, it's secure, and it works very, very well. Actually, when I was down in Florida, I hooked my parents up with uh, a Bitcoin wallet through blockchain.info. Because it's a lot easier to explain and to, you know, help people get started with than, say, downloading the official Bitcoin client and installing that and then having to download this huge blockchain. Just go to blockchain.info, get, get your Bitcoin wallet. You can get an app for it on your Android phone. And you can also use any other phone's operating system to just visit blockchain.info and use their web wallet. Let's go to the phones and to the fun. Darren's in Manchester. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Darren. Hey. hey. So I want to chime in on this whole discussion a little bit I, I really i don't think the well is poisoned uh, or at least i don't like that type of terminology it, i i think you should just think in terms of effective or or not effective and um what what uh egg me on hey, the Darren, call can, can i interrupt you real quick can you back off your phone like maybe an inch i want to see if that makes any difference in the audio okay. we're getting from you does that does that sound any better yeah i think it's something on it's probably something on our end or the phone system but go ahead with your thoughts okay Oh, that's okay. Better. Well, there was. I'm backing off a little bit. So, okay. when Mark was talking about marketing, and uh, we're talking about apples and oranges, we're talking about Free Keen and Keen, and we're talking about the Free State Project in the rest of New Hampshire. So, I, I do want to make that clarification right off. But um, well, we might be talking about oranges and tangerines, but I don't think we're talking about yeah. apples and oranges here. Okay. So very well. But when I first move for the project, people started telling me there's no reason to market the Free State Project within New Hampshire, because the whole idea of the project is you move people to New Hampshire from elsewhere. So it needs to be marketed elsewhere, not inside New Hampshire. I mean, spreading the ideas makes sense, but uh, the marketing for spreading the ideas hasn't, or uh, from kind of a consensus, it's, you know, nobody's making any diktats or anything, but a consensus has been we spread the ideas as the ideas. We don't really brand them as the project or anything like that. Right. So and a lot of people, think, when they're trying to start up an activist project, they're not necessarily thinking, how can I make this appeal to the locals? They're probably, in a lot of cases, thinking, how, what activism can I create that other activists will want to do? Because that's part of the hurdle is getting other people involved and in wanting to do your activism. Like with Robin Hooding, it's been sort of like a one or two man show for the longest time since it started, it seems. And now it's become like an operation involving lots of parties. And that's because they've made it profitable for people who do it. So you have to people a lot of times have to find ways to uh, make the activism something that they can get help with from other activists. So you can't it's like how many people can you involve in, in your choice making? Oh, right, right. So you have to market it to activists. So you can get volunteers, but you also need to market it to the general public. I mean, one thing that's done in, in Manchester is the peaceful streets where they mail people that have been accused of victimless crime and uh, basically let them know that there's a support network there. 
it, um, in New Hampshire. So, and I, that's what I would, that's what I call like slow, steep activism. It's like something that'll have an effect, but it won't necessarily be immediate. It'll, it'll be down the line. Yeah, uh, of course of I do I, that stuff too. Here have you had Keene. any positive reaction to that, Ian? Because I just wonder, you mean like, about, don't take a plea deal outreach no, all the time. N- not that don't pl- take a plea, but the the mailers. Because I we know stopped, you've had some negative. We stuff. stopped doing that just because we, um, you know, we do don't take a plea deal so consistently uh, with the mailing program. Just to kind of give people an idea of what that is, you you guys were. I know you started with marijuana there in the peaceful streets in Manchester. Have you expanded since then to other victimless crimes, Darren? Well. I'm not quite sure what the status of that is right now, but um, I know it was happening uh, pretty seriously there for a while. We did it on a weekly yeah. basis. Manchester is a lot larger than Keene, so there aren't as many arrests here. So we focused on every victimless crime here in Keene, uh, which you know only amounted to like six to ten. Oh, excuse me. Every victimless crime arresting someone who lives in New Hampshire. We did not send things to people living in Connecticut or, or New York or places like that. So we only wanted to focus right. on New Hampshireites. And uh, so we would send out these letters every week. And one person did respond positively when we saw them at court. But ultimately, the way – and then there was also a couple, uh, one person who was one of the haters from the Stop Free King group who told us to never send anything to her son again. Who's Don't an adult, by me. the way. He's an adult, uh, her son. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, uh, we decided to stop doing the letters because it was time very time-consuming as and far costly. as stuffing letters and, and costly. And we're you know, essentially giving money to the Postal Service. When ultimately, right. we were only able to also target Keene. Now, in Keene, New Hampshire, at the district court, there's people coming from towns all over the place. And these towns don't have police logs that you can just go to the website and, and, and download. So it would be impossible to really do the same thing consistently in the entire region. But if you just stand out in front of the courthouse and you hand out the same information to people, in this case, the don't take a plea deal flyer, you hit every single person who was arrested in Keene and you hit every single person arrested in the surrounding town. So we just determined that we're doing don't take a plea deal outreach so consistently here in town. I mean, literally, we're at every single morning arraignment unless somebody just happens to not make it for some reason uh but we're almost i mean almost every arraignment we're there so we just figured we were already covering that ground and it was pointless to to send the the messages but i do agree with you darren that it's good activism i I think that if you're not doing don't take a plea deal and i don't think that's being done regularly in manchester then that's a good way to do it and and what we have in uh, let me uh, tie up this call with this this statement what we have in new hampshire is a market there are people that move for the project and don't really like the flavor of activism going on in Keene, and those people don't move to Keene. And there's a lot of the state that's not Keene. Yep. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of different uh, flavors uh, just now, throughout the state. It's, but one thing we've Manchester. heard um, over time is, is that there are people that are turned off to the Free State Project entirely because they saw some activism that was on video that was going on in Keene or Boo-hoo. whatever. Just, well, just saying. I mean, if you want to get people moving, uh, then you need if to be concerned about If their level of dedication the- is that they won't come because of what somebody did in one part of New Hampshire, then they probably wouldn't have come. They probably would have come up with some other excuse anyway. Well, uh, first, impressions, too cold. first impressions matter. And yeah. if their first impression is this, and then they never look any further. Well, if you're just going to bellyache over that, then you can just ignore all the people that have come here who are good activists and who are active politically because of what has gone on in Well, Keene. I guess we'll just take this information and, and not learn anything from it. As a matter of fact, let's just run our There's whole lives without ever it. learning anything from any new information we got. What you're We're going to be a about. lot of fun to hang out with. Well, the problem, I think, is that our signals are all screwed up because it's not... You know, like when you guys do your show, you get certain signals that tell you what direction to go and it guides your behavior in that way. But with activism, like what are you selling? First of all, what's your product and how do you know and like what is the equivalent as far as profit and what's loss? You know, like how are we measuring these things? Darren, I want to thank you for your call and thoughts tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. 855 450 free. It depends on, you know, there's different things you can measure, right? There's response within the community, there's response outside of the community as far as activists, people coming here. Uh, 855 450 free. You take control here. The remaining moments of Free Talk Live are imminent.
I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Uncover a simple privacy loophole that can stop the NSA spying thugs in their tracks at privacylockdown.com. The NSA has already shut down hundreds of sites, and to truth be told, they could shut down this operation at any time. See, the privacy loophole I'm about to show you allows you to make all your sensitive information disappear in the next 30 days or less. Go to privacylockdown.com now to take your life off the grid and see the loophole in the NSA and FBI spying machine before they close the loophole forever. Go to privacylockdown.com. It's already too late. Criminals have kicked in your door and are now in your home. Before this happens, homeowners have a choice. One, do nothing and hope you aren't one of the 1.4 million families attacked each year. Or two, refuse to be a victim and for as low as $59, reinforce your doors with door devils. Door devils simply attach to existing door frames and have proven to stop the biggest bad guys from kicking in doors. Read our police testimonials of real-life events at doordevil.com. Alarms don't stop kick-ins. We do. Doordevil.com. Free Talk Live. I think you guys should be encouraging people to drop the drugs, drop the alcohol, and live a straight life. Why? And that's freedom. Well, that wait. is freedom. How, how can you say? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's freedom for you, but what if I enjoy altering my consciousness? Well, I think it's sad. Why? Um, it's a sad existence. Um, when people have to be addicted to drugs and alcohol. Oh, oh I'm not you're, addicted. Now, now you're assuming addiction. Alcohol, we're talking about marijuana, we're talking about drug use in general. What about it's caffeine? Sad Are we talking about caffeine? I'm talking about something that, what you just said, is mind-altering. So oh, caffeine certainly is mind-altering. If you eat a chocolate altering. candy bar, if you have a chocolate candy bar and there's caffeine in it, it doesn't get you high. Oh, you know what the well, wait is. a minute. Christy, I have a, I'm sensitive to, to caffeine, and I can tell you, two Diet Cokes will make me a very angry, angry man. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Only have a few moments left. Might be able to sneak your call in if you dial now. Toll free, 2855-453. That's 855-450-3733. With you in studio, it's Ian. Allie. And Mark. Don't forget to check out Allie's show, ALP. You can go download it at your leisure at alpshow.com. As we continue with your phone calls and thoughts, don't forget to join us online. Help us out. 
spreading the idea of Free Talk Live, getting freedom and liberty concepts into more ears, both on radio stations, which I just announced four new radio stations uh, today. All of them are coming on board for uh, for weekends. Actually, there's one station, WRMN, uh, in Elgin, Illinois, which is on board seven nights a week. So welcome aboard to them, taking our show live, uh, just kind of the west end of the Chicago suburbs. Elgin, Illinois, we're there uh, 6 to 9 Central every it night. It is in, dead in, the Chicago Metro. I mean, you know, the Chicago Metro is red on the Arbitron map, and the county Elgin's in, and it's, um, by the way, the eastern end of this county, so... Um, you know, it's it's rimshotting um, Chicago proper, but it is hitting Chicago as defined by uh, Nielsen ratings. Yeah, it's great. Uh, so welcome aboard to all our new listeners. And it's the Free Talk Live AMP program that really helps us bring new radio stations on and is also helping us bring new Internet listeners to the ideas of freedom because we've been doing uh, Google AdWords where we're advertising generally kind of generically to talk radio listeners so, you know, with Google AdWords, you write your ad. And so we used to have an ad that was kind of uh, one ad would target liberty oriented people already. But we want to bring newbies in. We want to bring people who are just searching for talk radio and related terms like that on Google. We want them to see and sample Free Talk Live. You can help us fund the Google AdWords and help us fund more outreach to radio stations and get your contribution matched. We still have a few hundred dollars a month that we can raise. All of it will be matched by very generous uh, contributors. So if you want to go to amp.freetalklive.com and sign up tonight and you do it for five bucks a month, it's like doing ten because of our matching contributors. So please help us out with the AMP program and get perks like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only forum, podcast, and more. All of it's there at amp.freetalklive.com. Let's go to Lumpy in the Shire. Lumpy, you're on Free Talk Live. Good evening, Ian, hey. uh, Ten, and Mark. Hey. Um, <laughs> the Ten. Hey, Lumpy. All right. <laughs> all She's right. a Ten, all right. All right. Yeah, all right. That's right, she is. Uh, and you guys are all tens, actually, in, 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 uh, in my eyes and in my heart. So, Thanks, Lumpy. Uh, Go ahead with your thoughts today. Well, thank you, guys. Um, well, this is an interesting topic, seeing as I have lived in Keene before. And I'm actually in Michigan now. I'm not in New Hampshire. The Free State Project did get me back home, and I call New Hampshire my home or the geographical slave farm you want to call New Hampshire. Um, one of the least unfree, except for in marijuana, yet. Um, mm. You know, and, and I, I do feel, by the way, that that when that pendulum swings back finally in New Hampshire, that it will swing back toward, uh, ext- you know, extremely. It'll be probably better than anywhere else, but it's going to take, you know, what it's going to take. Uh, but anyway, not to get on to that subject. But uh, you know, I, I wanted to say, you know, one of the things that I, when I was there, I found that we were very well received, and yes, there was that that message, that feeling from the local people, but overall, the, the, the feeling that I got from everybody who was in the, in the town, most everybody I talked to, we made some friends for life in that town. People were happy that we were there. Yes, there were some people who, didn't, who did not agree. Some were uptight. Yes, some are just uptight personality people, sure, busy bodies and whatnot. And, uh, but, the, you know, one thing that I also wanted to mention was, well, um, before I say that, sorry, uh, is, uh, well, you know, just having some local inroads. I think, you know, the fact that we went to a church locally was helpful. And yeah, I know there are, you know, church isn't a big thing for a lot of the, the guys who come up there, but the fact that we were there and, and spent some time there and were able to meet some of the locals and get really involved with some of those things and some of the, um, you know, it's not, you know, I, I moved back to New Hampshire, you know, for liberty. It's not full-time activism, which can become, you know, all activism and no fun can make people kind of jerks. Mm-hmm. So, um, does right, that make sense? Because you, you kind of experience the world from a point of view of, well, a lot of activism involves a lot of critique, uh, as any yeah. activist would know. So I think that just constantly being critiqued and not getting a lot of, like, your reward system is different than other things. Like if you work out every day, eventually you're hoping to see some results as far as muscle mass or weight loss. But when you're doing activism, like where do you go to see results? The results aren't always immediate. Right. You're right. And that's kind of goes back to what Darren was saying with the, the seep activism, but every now and then you'll get, you'll get an indicator, right? So like I was out in front of the courthouse the other day doing, don't take a plea deal outreach as I tend to, uh, I do it at least probably about six times a, a month. And, uh, I was doing this, don't take a plea deal outreach. 
and there was one guy who walked in. It was a pretty slow morning. It was there weren't very many cases on the docket. It was toward there's two week window where they do these cases. It was toward the end of that window, so they didn't have much scheduled. But I was glad I stayed through the entire hour because there was a guy who showed up, probably about 18, 19 years old, kind of had that wide-eyed look to him like he'd never <laughs> been through this before and he, he acknowledged when I spoke with him that he had never been through this before but I handed him one of the don't take a plea deal flyers and as he was about to go in he turns around and he says are you with cop block and I said yep I'm with cop block and he says oh thank goodness you're here I you know I really didn't know what to expect out of this Aww. and I sent you guys a message over Facebook and you guys got back to me and I hadn't seen this because I just you know it's one of those things I didn't get that message somebody else did on the keen cop block page but, uh, you know, he really appreciated having somebody there to be able to talk to. I and, got that all the time. We yeah. got that all the time. We were going down there with the apps that you guys hooked up on our smartphones, listening to the scanners. We knew we would we would tell the kids, evacuate the party houses. The, 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 the bully, the town bullies are coming. You know, the blue light gangs, mm-hmm. they're coming. We And we do that. And it was great. You know, the, and, and we, we did. We'd, we'd help kids. And I do think we've decreased. And one of the reasons why you're hated, so you know, if there is that... Hey, thanks for baiting me into the call tonight, Mark. Uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, is uh, is because you know there is something happening. You know there yes. is change. There is but, an effect. So but, there's but your, lumpy. There's, my concern is is that, my, lumpy. My concern is is that you guys were out there I doing this your activism. Concern, Mark. I totally get it. Right. These these I college totally students, you're doing all this stuff for. You're cop blocking for them. You're 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 you know trying to let them yeah, know that the police are on the right. These college, are the people that you. we did the interview with, and those people. Well, you don't know what percentage of them were college students versus townies. They're Mark. in the demographic, and townies could be at those parties too. Love you. <laughs> I could look. I first I first moved to New Hampshire from Massachusetts in '85. I was 15 years old. And, um, you know, so just to admit the part of the demographic for your show is me, you know, and part of it. Um, but uh, I spent, you know, quite a lot of time there and I really didn't know what I was moving there. We didn't really defect Massachusetts at the time. I just moved from Massachusetts. The, the, the last, the, you know, the next time it, it, it was, def- you know, there's no place really to be. There is the feeling it, it is truly there. But it's like Facebook, though, I think, you know, how Facebook can kind of narrow your choices down instead of new things. They say, oh, well, you like liberty, so you're going to you would like this. And they suggest all these things and it kind of narrows you down. Uh, but that, I think, can also happen in Keene or anywhere. We we don't get those inroads, those those we don't meet those you know, the, the hearts. You have to talk. You, you got to have a heart to heart conversation with local people and understand where they're coming from, because, hey, they they know a lot. And, and we are welcome. The people are welcome up there vastly. It just the depends on who you talk to. It really does. I mean, there are people who yeah. absolutely hate the guts of the activists. But I think it's important to point out, well, and I, I agree with like you, you, Lumpy, that 14 more times out of their way to tell you that they don't like you. Than that's the people certainly who are true. Like you. Yeah. yeah, and and also uh, there was an incident this this year, this last election, this uh, this March in Bedford, New Hampshire, where two there's never been any noteworthy activism that's ever happened in Bedford that I re- I can recall. But there were a couple of guys who are relatively new movers to Bedford. One pretty new. One's been there a few years. They decided to run for local political office, and the local political establishment freaked. Out because these two individuals yeah. did not hide the fact that they are Free State Project participants, and so the local right. politicos freaked out. They spent thousands of dollars on full page, full wow. color, two uh, two sided advertisements to send to houses in every single household <laughs> in the town of Bedford, proclaiming they, them carpetbaggers. They right? created uh, yeah. this guy, this one that guy. Bedford, though. That no, but, but my point being is that there yeah. weren't ever any, you know, well poisoning things that went on in Bedford. It's oh, just that's that, not true. No, you know as well as no. I do that they in that um the the blog post that came out after that cited the activism that went on in Keene. That was just one voter and why he didn't vote for the Free Staters it in Bedford. The people got who got were opposing the page. The people who were opposing the the uh the Bedford Free Staters weren't talking about what happened in Keene as much as they were talking about that the Free State Project stands to destroy their precious state and their town government and destroy you know the military. And really, it was just all about how these are just anarchists and they want to destroy everything that we've built. They want to destroy our community. And that's what the message was against those guys there. And they got that level of pushback just for running for political office. You know, I didn't move to New Hampshire to change any locals' minds. I came here to be part of a community, and I have been fully satisfied as part of that goal. 
We are going to change people's minds, though, over time, and that has been happening. And, uh, Lumpy, thanks for your call and perspective. Look forward to seeing you back here in New Hampshire someday. The fact is, anytime the potential for change exists, there will be people who are frightened to death of that, and they will lash out violently against it. Get real. That's just life. More coming up tomorrow. The warning signs. First, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept Bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, April 14th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,323, silver opened at $19.81, and Bitcoin is trading at $459.40. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One Terra hash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Online at affordablesound.com or call them at 512-459-5253. In the news, a former employee is alleging that Britain's largest drug company bribed doctors to prescribe their medications in Europe. The Telegraph reports that the former GlaxoSmithKline sales representative claims that Polish doctors were paid to promote the company's asthma drug. An investigation has been launched and the BBC reports that 11 doctors and a GlaxoSmithKline regional manager have been charged for their involvement in the scheme. The company has also been accused of bribery in China and Iraq. Minor earthquakes beneath the Appalachians have been linked to fracking. The finding comes through work conducted by Ohio geologists, according to the Associated Press. The discovery is being touted as the first time tremors have been directly associated with fracking. The five small quakes happened last month near Youngstown. On Thursday, the United States Sentencing Commission voted to reduce federal prison sentences for most drug offenses. The commission stated that the move would reduce the federal prison population by 6,500 inmates over the next five years. The changes are expected to reduce the average sentence for drug offenders by 11 months. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM. June 21st at Austin Music Hall. 
Get yours at voiceandexit.com. Support also comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights at 9 o'clock central at coreymoreshow.com. And support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated. Precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977. Online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, April 14th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Flooding is reported at Japan's Fukushima power plant, where a pump apparently flooded the basements with highly contaminated cooling tank water. Russia Today reports that around 200 tons of water ended up flooding the basements beneath the complex. The water was contained to that location and was unable to leak to other areas or escape into the ocean. On Thursday, thousands of activists in Mexico City marched for